All right. Sorry about that. I messed up and ended the stream when I wasn't trying to end the stream. I was trying to end the camera that I was using. So I'm going to work on this over here. I did that and let's do reserve stop and let's go. Oh, you know what? That's what I was doing. My needle came out of the thing. So that's what I was trying to do and could not do it because I was holding the camera. All right. So if you came back, welcome back. If you didn't, well, we missed you. And it's all right. I'm over threading this machine so that I can start stitching. All right, cool. So back over here to the table. Sorry about that, y'all. My bad. <sighs> all right, so here is Chef Jacket number two. Yeah, I know. I ended the stream and wasn't trying to, but I did on accident um, because I was trying to stop the cell phone camera so that I could thread the machine and ended up just stopping the whole darn broadcast, man, because I wasn't paying attention. All right, so... Here is the next chef coat. Same style, different size. And the cool thing about um, the different sizes is, I mean, sorry, not the cool thing about the different sizes. The cool thing about the button trick is usually, even with it being a different size, the buttons have been resized as well. So even if you use the button trick like we did with the jacket and like we did with the other chef coat, it'll still work because the buttons are going to be moved in relation to the size as well. So let's lay this out so that you can see it. And there we go. So again, they suggest seven to nine inches down. Same principle. You can use the um, whatever the ruler to determine if that's going to work or not. But for me, because all of the shifts wear the same jacket, all of them, I want them to look uniform. So I'm going to use the exact same placement for this as I did with that one. And as I do with all their other chef jackets. All right. So no matter what chef jacket I do, I'm centering it with their second button down. And so all of their jackets come out looking uniform and it's still left chest. Okay. So there we go. There I'm doing it a little off center so that um i can take into account this space over here and now this will be ready to hoop but i'm going to show you the adapter that mighty hoops has to help people who don't have the mighty hoops hooping station because i don't always pull out my hooping station especially like in this instance where i only have two jackets i'm not pulling out the whole big hooping station just for two jackets so they have a adapter that you can use that's more affordable than the whole hooping station and it still holds your stabilizer. So you just lay the stabilizer on top and you get your stabilizer ring and notice it's the same shape as my hoop. So when I lay this down on top and lay this on top of that, it holds my stabilizer in place for me which allows me time to arrange it, adjust it. And then all I have to do is when that jacket stops stitching, I can take the top hoop, snap it on top of this, and then slide this bracket off the back and I'm done. I'm hooped and I don't have to worry about things being in the way. All right, so this one is marked. So I'm going to go ahead and... Hey, Diane, you're welcome. Hey, Miss Pressure. I need some help with selecting an embroidery machine. Any helpful information on the ZSK machine? Um, so I personally have never used the ZSK. 
But what I will tell you is you're talking about multi-needle embroidery machine. That's a lot of money that you're going to be spending and investing on a machine. Multi-needle embroidery machines are definitely the way to go if you're going to be doing embroidery um, on a commercial basis like this and you're going to have back-to-back -back orders. Like if you're embroidering just for fun and you want to do personal gifts here or there, I wouldn't necessarily suggest a multi-needle machine unless you just want one. Um, but if you are trying to establish a business and be able to do uh, embroidery jobs regularly yes go multi-needle go commercial if i'm not mistaken the zsk is a commercial brand so or an industrial rather that's the word i meant to say it's an industrial brand industrial versus commercial um for me in explaining it in the best way i possibly can is the commercial can be used in a business industrial is to be used like in a warehouse so your sweatshops your um you know high product turnover type environments that's what you want industrial for because industrial is no frills no extra cutesy things to it it's gonna get a job done and get it done fast and get it done without breaking the machine all the time so your commercial machines may not be made for that volume of work. Your industrial machines will be made for that volume of work. It's almost like taking a heavy duty singer uh, sewing machine that you can buy from Walmart. It's heavy duty, so it will do some heavy duty stuff, but it's not made to go into a sweatshirt where they're making denim jeans all day, every day, nonstop for a full, you know, 24 hour shift type situation. So going back to ZSK, I'm pretty sure that's an industrial machine, uh, but I have never used it. So what I would do is definitely look up reviews, um, go on um, like Google ZSK reviews, stuff like that. Um, see if you can find a ZSK Facebook group, join in, check what the uh, comments are, look and see what problems people have. Or if you're in any other embroidery groups, go into your other embroidery groups and type in ZSK in the search for that embroidery group. Not the full search for Facebook, but the search for that particular group. Do a search and type in ZSK and see if anybody else has anything to say about it that actually own the machine. Um, and that'll give you a good idea. But for the most part, when you go to purchase it, see if there's a warranty. What is the warranty like? Um, because that's also going to dictate to you what happens in the event of mechanical failure of that machine. Are they going to give you good support? Are they going to walk you through how to fix it? Because industrial machines, generally, you fix minor problems. They send somebody out for major problems or refer you to someone for major problems, depending upon the machine. From what I understand, the uh, mail codes, they have techs that come to work on their stuff you don't send their stuff to anybody else whereas other machines like redline for instance there aren't any techs that come out they'll get on the phone with you and walk you through fixing it but there's no technician that'll come out from that company to fix it or you can find a technician so you got different uh, uh companies that do different things like uh tex mac happy embroidery machines they have technicians that will go fix the machines so you know, check your warranty, um, check your uh, groups and see if anybody else is reporting any problems or whatever with that particular brand, that particular machine and Google it as well. You know, and that's your best course of action logo zone with making sure that you get what you need out of your embroidery machine. So I personally have always recommended well, as far as an industrial machine is concerned, I've recommended Redline because the price point versus what you get in a machine is very, very good. But there are other brands out there like Tajima machines. You almost can't go wrong with a Tajima. Tajima is known in the industry for industrial embroidery machines, um, but they are quite pricey. So, you know, 
it's just it, it boils down to your budget what you can afford and what you have access to what you can get shipped to you as well as um you know some people prefer a name brand because they feel more comfortable with a name brand whereas there are now a lot of um um overseas embroidery machines coming in like in our in our group i forget the name of the company bai i think um is a chinese company and they sell embroidery machines and they um advertise in our group from time to time you know and that's a industrial machine and a couple of people have brought a bai so hey kelly trish b how are you welcome hey jacqueline martinez hey jesse gibson hey karen d how are you hi diane mccoy so yeah i appreciate y'all coming back i'm sorry i ended the last live that was an accident i did not intend to do that at all That is warm. I need to put that back. It's almost like drinking a warm beer. Oops. All right. So put that back. Now, in addition to these hoodies, hold on. I knew that was coming. And then I walked away from the machine. I changed the color because now it needs to stitch the white. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. All right. Um. Oh, let me tell it to stop after that, and then we'll stitch this jacket when that one is done. In addition to the chef jackets, the exact same logo that I'm putting on the chef jackets, I'm putting on hoodies. But instead of it being up here, it's actually embroidered on the hoodie. So I have a much larger version of the logo that I'm putting on the hoodies. So I can't remember how many hoodies I got, y'all. I swear I don't. But I have to do the hoodies as well. And then I have DTF t-shirts that need to be done uh, with the exact same logo on long sleeve t-shirts. So it's a pretty big order. I love the sound of your machine. Oh, I love the sound of an embroidery machine, period, man. It's just something about it i can be walk it's funny i walk through the mall and i hear the embroidery machine and i'm like embroidery machine you know and i look around and sure enough i'm beside a store that is doing hats or something like that it's funny to see it um but yeah i can pick up on an embroidery machine anywhere hey angela dandridge how are you so yeah, you guys, that's it. It's a chill night. I'm just working, um, trying to get these chef coats done. I only had two, thank goodness, this time. Usually I have, you know, 15, 10 to 15 to do, but I guess, you know, these are some sturdy jackets. So once a year, um, they must got some new chefs in or something. So I got to get them some jackets. They also want t-shirts bling, uh, with, because I've blinged out their logo before. So I have to do that as well. Um, what else do I have to do? I need to bling a sweatsuit, um, pants and zip up jacket, jogging zip up jacket for my mom with my dad's logo. I need to do that. So what did I say? Switch hoodies, long sleeve t-shirts, V-neck t-shirts with the same logo on it and then the jogging suit for my mom and then I think I'll be caught up with everything as far as outside work is concerned I think oh uh, y'all my workload is heavy right now but we've caught up on our rhinestones for the most part so oh the chimes and the motor yeah they do have the um drink water coming at where Switch to water. Marion, you're right. I did miss that. Hey, Patrice. I ended the last one on accident. You're right, because that's gross. This one, this one, I, I guess I I don't know why it doesn't taste. It don't even taste like soda. I don't have a problem drinking water now. I do love water. It's just sometimes it's... Oh, no, no, no. I know why I was drinking water. Hold on. Ooh.
No, I was drinking the soda because I have a migraine. Um, and I was trying to get some caffeine to um, help me figure out why my head was pounding earlier. Um, and I took something, so the water was helping me with getting that out of there. All right, so this stitched out almost perfectly, almost perfectly. And I'm going to show you why I'm saying almost. Okay, so here is the design. It stitched really quickly. Can you see the um, center line? So I dropped it a little bit too low, but it's okay. That Remember the seven to nine was right in the middle of that button. So going a little bit too high, a little bit too low shouldn't hurt us too bad. But I'll know for sure once I take this out of the hoop. All right, and check it. But it's already stitched, so if it's if it's off, it's off. Ain't nothing I can do about it now. All right, and so now I'm going to pop this right on. And that looks great. Looks good. I'm going to make sure everything is centered. All right, and now all I have to do is when we open this up, see there's our stabilizer holder. Just take it off. Bloop. Just like that. It held the stabilizer for me. And now my stabilizer back here is perfect. It's absolutely perfect. And sounds like a drum. All right. So this is ready to go on the machine. So I'm going to take this over there. I'm going to leave that right there so that we can make sure that's good. Give me a sec while I load this one. And then reset it because... It is, you know what? That's perfect. That's crazy to me. All right. And so let's go up a little bit more. Is it centered? Nope. So I'm going to move it over some. Boom. All right. And then let's go to sewing. And that's three. And I'm going to stop it. Okay, so we got that one set up, and it is stitching now the exact same logo. All right, and so here is our design. Notice it's right here with the button. I prefer it be more centered with the button, but we're gonna go. We're gonna roll with it this time because it's, it's already stitched, and I'm not pulling these stitches out. And cool thing is with the Taylor's chalk most garments that you embroider come in with a built-in eraser for the Taylor's chalk so we're just going to use that built-in eraser just like so Taylor chalk is gone and look clean eraser how cool is that all right and so I'm going to get my trim scissors skizzers, and I'm going to trim some of these jump stitches whoops or tails all right and that looks great. It turned out absolutely gorgeous. It does stitch very well. And now on the back side, here is the chaos. There's a couple of things you can do with this. You can leave it like it is. Usually I leave it like it is, but for the sake of showing you guys, a lot of times I'll get a lighter. And I will just lightly and very quickly go over these loose threads just like so to tidy it up just a little bit. Not a whole lot, just enough to curl those threads in so that they're not sticking out and stick the customers. All right. And so now we're going to trim. And I'm holding the fabric down up on back up under here so that I don't cut my customer's jacket. And we don't want to say how many times we've actually cut the customer's item. And then when we get to this side, it's easier to just flip it over and take a look. And voila, we are done with that. So this first chef jacket is done. All right, so I'm going to move this out of the way because I'm done with using that size hoop. I only had two jackets to do, thank goodness. And what I generally do is, after I trim the stabilizer, 
after I look at it, make sure everything looks great. I button it back up like it was when I got it out of the package. Like so. Thank you, Jesse. And then I turn it over and I look at my creases, all my creases here. And I just follow my creases and put my jacket, put the put the jacket rather back to the way it was as much as possible. So that it'll fit right back in that package and go right back to my customer. Just like they might have bought it out the store that way, even though they did not. All right. So there's that. There's that. Flap that. Make sure this is like that. That's like that. And see my crease here. Fold it back up. There's a crease down here at the bottom. Flap it over at the bottom. And then flap it up at that crease. Oh, didn't have to. Never mind. And there it looks just like it did when I got it out the package. Absolutely love doing these, especially when I have more than a few. I just put a little train and keep them going, keep them rolling. And this was the size medium. I'll grab the size medium bag. Make sure the desiccant is still in there and slide this puppy right on in there for my customer so that they can give them to whatever shift it is that's going to be wearing this particular coat. Just like so. All right. Nice. There we go. All right, so this one is done. So as soon as, why is it not? Oh, yeah, I forgot. See, it tore that stupid sticky strip. That's all right. Um, so now that this one is done, we'll do the next one. As soon as it comes off the machine, we'll trim it up and everything just the exact same way. And then our order of hoodies will be done. I mean, not hoodies. Oh, chef coats. So like I said, here is the hoodie. Um, I need to open the box. And see how many I have to do. Because I don't know how many I've got to do. But here is the hoodie. I stopped doing them. Um, when I Because I, I started these hoodies. Probably about three weeks ago now. And I stopped them because it was stitching incorrectly. And it was taking it a lot longer to stitch. Because it was stitching in the wrong order. The wrong way. So I had to change the embroidery design. And then um, I never went back to finish these. So it's time to finish them. So, and then, like I said, I have my dad's um, embroidery, uh, not embroidery, rhinestone logo to do. So I need to do his logo. Hey, Kevin Moore, how are you? Hey, AJ Harris. Hey, JBJB. Excuse me for drinking <clears throat> in your ears. So with this, this is for my mom <clears throat> and my dad um, just grabbed a set from, I think this is Walmart and he suggested that we put rhinestone um on the leg basketball he wants just the basketball on the leg down here and then his no look um rhinestone design on the front of this jacket and then i'm probably going to put his other part to his logo where it says where mentality beats physicality on the back of her jacket. So, and I haven't even cut that rhinestone template out yet. I did the no look template, but I have not done the mentality beats physicality template. So I need to bling that. 
And also, like I mentioned earlier, I have some long sleeve t-shirts to do for DTF. Hey, Uni. Honey, buddy, I love the video of you and your baby dancing. That was so cute. It was the cutest thing. It put a huge smile on my face. I was so happy to see that. That was super cute, super dope. And then tomorrow, what I'm thinking about doing with you guys, and a video probably tonight sometime, is busting open this. This came from DIME. And it's an applique kit, pretty much, showing how Caesar and Kingstar have um, joined forces to match their thread to their vinyl and we can use it for applique so they sent it and so i got a really cute design i would like to do with you guys on a kid's shirt um so i'm excited to do this project tomorrow with the design from off of creative fabrica that's the plan um for tomorrow oh it says includes a free design i did not know that let me see what the free design is. If their design is cuter than mine, I'll go with theirs. That's nice of them to include a design. That's what's up. Let's see. Oh, that's cute. It's a little birdie design. So we may do that. That's super cute. I like that. Isn't that adorbs? Little birdies and it says love oh so yeah Marilyn I thought about you with the applique especially the one applique because it's easy to do the one design that I found on creative fabric it's so easy to do it's pathetic um so we may do I may do the design I found only because of how simple it is and then I don't know. We might can do this too. We might can do this one as well. I don't know. We'll see. So at any rate, you never heard of King Star Thread? Yes, King Star Thread is um, they carry it at DIME, um, and they have glitter, not glitter, but it is glitter, but it's not um, some shimmer thread that you can use that works really well with the five by seven embroidery machines. And as you see, they match perfectly with this glitter vinyl. So it's a it'll make for a really pretty um, embroidery project. So we may do that. We may do that. Let's say five. All right. Then this chef code will be done here in a moment. Un momento. And then after that one's done, then we'll look at these. I don't know which one I'm going to do. Whether I'm going to do the hoodies or do my mommy's sweatsuit, sweat track suit. But yeah, so this is hopefully the plan for tomorrow. Um, that's hopefully going to be the goal. Because I'm very excited about this. Think about doing that one recorded video. Do, so you use glitter vinyl instead of fabric as the applique. That is absolutely correct. One more week of work and then off for two weeks. So excited to try more projects. Holler! Oh, don't play with me, Marilyn. We'll find you all kind of cool stuff to do. <laughs> yes, you can use glitter vinyl in place of fabric for uh, applique. Very much so. Love King Star Metallic as the thread is soft and not like embroidering with wire. That's good to know. Karen D only get one week off. Oh, I saw we don't play with me, Marilyn. Don't oh, I might do that applique tonight. I might do that with y'all tonight. Let's see. What do I have behind me? All kind of crap, but it's gonna be all right. It's informal. 
Yeah, let's do this camera. Yeah, there, camera. Okay. All right. Y'all can see my junky background that I haven't been doing anything with. Oh my gosh, my hair is still damp. But at any rate, hey y'all. So this is what I'm hoping we'll be able to work with. Let's open this. Because I want to see the um she said it's soft. I'm trying to make sure is this the same thread that I used. They sent, did they send me metallic before? I can't remember if they sent me metallic before. Come on and get off my hand. Did that not cut? It did not cut. Hold on, y'all. Struggling. My arthritis is acting up. Oh my gosh. Why is my machine stopping? Oh, it is soft. It is soft. It's not, it's not, uh, stiff at all, actually. Hold on. Okay. See? Do you see how pliable that is? It's nice and just like thread. I don't know how well. There you go. You see a little bit better. It is a nice thread. So we'll see. We might do the project tonight. Shoot, don't play with me. <sighs> Once I find out why this is wanting to trip and not stitch. Oh. Let's see what's going on over here at the lay embroidery machine. Oh. Yeah, it looks like it might be out of uh what's the name of this stuff? Five and three. So give me a second, y'all. I love these. Yeah. No, it wasn't out of embroidery, uh, Bob and three. What's the name? Um, I love the what are these bobbins called? Oh, hang on, these are called field tech. I'm sure many of y'all with the multi needle machines have used field tech before, but this is field tech. Love these bobbins, but they go quickly like they go so quick. It, I can. I need to check and see. That's 135 yards. I need to check and see how many yards is on my normal bobbin. But man, those things go super duper quick. But look, isn't that pretty? That's so pretty. Does it work in high speed embroidery machine? That's a good question. Use it all the time on my multi needle of my say. Okay, cool. That pink is pretty. That rose, that's beautiful. I think that would look good with our light rose rhinestones. We need to throw some um, bling with these stones right here. Only with that thread. All right, y'all. So here is the last jacket. It is done. It turned out absolutely beautiful. All right. So we're going to unhoop it. I'm going to take the hoop off the back, put my hoop on the front, and I'm going to put this up because we are done with it for the night. Need my trash can. All right. And so again, Let's move this out of the way for right now. And move you. And move you. And set you off to the side. Okay. All righty. And don't forget, we got our Taylor's chalk here that I got to get off with the magic eraser that comes with every, every item you embroider. It comes with this magic eraser. So just erase it. Just like so. Look at how perfect that is. No residue left behind. And there you got a nice clean embroidery design looking really spiffy. 
All right, so here's our threads. Like I said, you don't have to burn these threads off if you don't want to, but you can. I mean, it doesn't hurt anything. Um, and it gives a clean, cleaner presentation, I should say. But you got to wave really quickly and be done with it. Then we're going to trim the stabilizer out from around. Toss that to the side. Go around. Toss that to the side. And no, I'm just going to set it down. All right, so that looks great. That looks great. Let's button this puppy up. Tim wanted me to go upstairs to work on something in my craft room. Picked up my computer to take it upstairs. And he said, come on, ladies. Time to go upstairs. Tell Tim, okay, we coming. We are headed upstairs with you. Just got to hold on to the handrail so I don't fall. All right. And so now I'm going to, again, follow my creases that are on my jacket so that I can fold it right back to the way it was before I got it out of the package. Gives a nice, clean presentation to the customer. Even these little creases, I try to mimic those somehow. Fold that under because that apparently how, see, even apparently that's how that was, I guess. It's going to look exactly like they got it in the package. All right, so fold that crease, fold that crease, and tuck this side under this side. There we go, because the tag is on this side over here. So, is that how that was? Yep. Yeah. Something like that. Close enough. Ready and then fold this up, and there we can put this right back in the bag. Nope, look, that's a crease right there, so it was folded up even more. Bam! All right, and now I'm gonna get my bag, my desiccant is in there, turn it this way so the back of the jacket is. The opening is to the front. Make sure I got it up the right side way and put it back in the bag. Voila. Presentation is our thing. Let's tuck that like it's supposed to be. And there, this order is done. This part of the order, anyways. Speaking of which, need to send him the bill because I forgot to do that. All right. So there's that. Now that I have pulled out my um, this package, and now I kind of want to do that. Y'all you know, got me wanting to do that, and that's not a part of the money making thing for tonight is for a video but it's not hard to do that's the cool thing about it so i think i'll go ahead and save this let me not get into trouble with mr mcquackens so we'll do some quick bling for my mommy instead even though i have not cut out the other part yet that sucks now that i think about it Let's see, do I have, no, I do. I just gotta get it. I need hyacinth in SS6. And I had it over here somewhere on the table. Um, I don't see it. What did I do with it? Will we, oh, there it is. It's way over there. He's laughing. It's all right, Tim. We coming up the stairs too. I hope we all made it up there safely. I didn't slide and bump no heads on the way back down. Okay. So here is an SS6 size basketball. And I'm going to reuse 
some transfer tape that I used the other day. Let me make sure that's long enough for that. Just barely. Okay. So this is for the pants leg. Dad said. So we're going to put this on the bottom of the leg. And when you bling, of course, you want to pour more than what you need so that the other stones will flip the ones that don't turn right side up. And then if all of them don't bling in, you know, don't fret. We have tools available to help you get the stones from here to there. Just as long as the majority are in there. We don't want to be blinging one at a time um on a regular basis so rub the tip of your wax pen and just barely touch the stone and it will pick up that stone don't press on your stone just barely touch it and pick it up because if you um put a lot of pressure on the stone some of the wax from the tip can transfer to the stone and it will make the stone difficult to pick up and we don't want that because wax is going to repel the glue on the the sticky on the transfer tape so if you use one of these oh crap if you use one of these to pick up your stones and put them in place and then you use your transfer tape afterwards to pick up stones and you see certain stones aren't picking up Think back to see if one of those stones is, or the stones that aren't picking up are the ones that you touched with your wax tool. Um, because a lot of times that is what will keep a stone from sticking to the transfer tape. All right. So that basketball is done. I'm going to need two because I need one for the logo and then I need one by itself for the pants leg. So I'm going to cut this. Went from embroidery to bling. I could be blinging while the other sweatshirts are embroidering, couldn't I? <sighs> All right. Let's see. Let's leave that right there. All right. And again, we're going to pour, get our stones over here. Like I said, use more than what you need so that they can help each other flip over. Because it's a sci scientific method to get them to flip, fortunately. And it also helps if you go circular sometimes, just barely, barely add pressure with these SS6. SS6 don't take a lot of pressure to get them to behave too much pressure with ss6 actually is counterproductive but um light pressure actually gets them to do a little bit better behaving when you're blinging all right and when you do your brush in your stones don't bump the table don't um move your transfer none of that stuff because stones will go flying and then you'll be sad so just leave them sitting there still so this that we're doing for my mom is a layered look okay so this is just like you layer vinyl you layer your rhinestones all right and hopefully i did that right gosh i think i might put that too close to the edge okay so i only needed two basketballs which is good Put my lid back on my container of stones. All right. And so what I'm going to attempt to do is layer this. So I'm trying to find how it's. There we go. No, I did it right. Okay. So here is. So when I flip that back over, it should line up. Wait a minute. Nope, that's off a little bit. Hold on. Move it up 
just a little bit. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna flip this back. What is the matter, puppy? All right, and I'm gonna bling just this so that I can put this on the pants leg with the border on it. And I'm actually gonna use some SS6 uh, Crystal AB for this because it's going on a black um, tracksuit. So I could have used black stones, but I'm gonna use Crystal AB so that it'll stand out a little more. My puppy is in there making noise. I'm wondering if she got to go out. All right. Mr. McQuackens is having some him time. So your puppy has to go out. It's going to be on me. Take her out to the potty break. All right. So I have one, two, three, four stones that did not brush in. I don't feel any extra. So let's grab my pickup tool and put that one in there. That one in there. That one in there. And that one in there. Boom. All right. So because I layered, um, move this out of the way. Because I layered it first before I brushed these other stones in and then attached it to the chopping mat or even if it's just the table and left this in place, I should be able to flip this right back over and it land in place so that it layers like it's supposed to. And I forgot I did those extra lines out and don't have enough things. So I'm going to have to put some more thing, some more tape. But See how it now is layered like it's supposed to be? So I'm going to cut a piece of this off the back and bring it down the side so that it'll grab all of those stones. All right. So now we have a double layered rhinestone template done. Can you see that? I don't know how well you were able to see it before. I apologize. But all I did was layer the ball on the blank non-stone rhinestone flock and lined it up with a piece of transfer tape that's too big and adhered it back here so that I could flap it and it not move and not move in relation to the template. Then I flipped it back, put something on it to weigh it out of the way, brushed the template, and then flipped it right back over. And so now we have a template that's brushed with both layers in there. That's that Hyacinth AB and the Crystal AB. Okay, so I'll make sure that's what that needs to be. And then we'll take this off. And I'm going to, uh-oh, these stones didn't stick good. Oh, that's the other thing, too. When you layer it like that, you definitely want to make sure that you're rubbing real good um, to the stones that you just brushed in because the highest stones are sitting on top of the template, whereas your um, second layer of stones are down in the template, the rhinestone template. So you want to rub down in where those stones are to make sure that the sticky transfer tape reaches and touches the top of those stones down below. So I forgot to do that part. I don't usually layer like this. So it's uh, usually I just do one layer at a time. For me, that's easier, but just wanted to show that technique. For those who may not know. All right, there we go. Let's see, I got one, two stones that still wanted to stay home and not come out to play, but Rub it with a fingernail, and there it is on there. So this is the template that's going on the pants leg. 
So I'm going to stick this to her um, sweatsuit bottom, the pants leg. And then this ball that I blinged first, this one here, I'm going to bling the whole um, logo and put this on the left chest. I now need to make sure there's enough room for that on the left chest. So let me do that real quick because I've not measured that yet. I just kind of like assumed that it would work. So this is roughly about 11 and a half inches wide. Yeah, 11 and a half inches wide. So let me see what kind of space I got on the chest of that um, jogging jacket. Don't fall. Oh, oh. All right. 11 and a half, right? All right, so usually when folks do um, things on the front of jackets, they'll do left chest, okay? That's entirely up to the customer. Left chest logo, right chest logo, it's up to your customer. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Most instances, it's a left chest logo, but your customer may not want it to be left chest. They may want a right chest logo and their name on the left chest. Check with your customers. Um, before you argue with them and say, no, it's supposed to be left chest. No, it's what the customer wants. That's what people tend to forget. All right. So what did we say? 11 and a half, right? Woo, that's too big. So that's not going to work on the front of mommy's um, jacket. So we're going to have to put no look on the back. And what I may do is the ball on the front as well. Uh, I may do that. Even though he's supposed to be resizing it for me, seeing if he can't get a smaller no look. So, but for the time being, we'll put it on the back. All right. And say no look where mentality beats physicality. You know what? Let me call my dad. I'll find out what he wants. But on the front, I'm gonna put the basketball. I'll put the basketball. Unless he wants me to wait on the smaller. What time is it? It is 8:30. He might still be up. My dad goes to sleep early sometimes. But meanwhile, we do have the thing for the pants leg. Let me see. It's almost ready for the um, ball on the leg. It's at 325, and I press rhinestones at 350 for 10 to 12 seconds, 12 seconds generally. And he said, the, that's right, he said the right leg is where he wanted the ball to go on um, her pants leg. Oh, you hung a wall, Chef. That's cool. Did I did I kill my phone? Ugh, I can't even call my dad. I killed the phone. It's a cuss. All right. Well, that sucks. Let's see. Is this the charger? No. Y'all, I'm forever killing my phone. I swear. I'm about to need a new one. So, so much for that. Can't call my daddy. Just crazy, just crazy. I swear. I'm gonna pre press her pants over here. What's the matter, puppy? What? Please tell me you don't want to go outside. Please tell me you do not want to go outside. Is that what it is? Do you not want to go outside? You don't want to go outside, do you? <sighs> Crazy dog. All right. So pre-press that. We're at 345 degrees. And I'll say we'll put the logo. Let me fold it first so that it doesn't put that heat on my table 
I'll say we'll put it. I don't know. All right here. I wish she was here to put them on so that I'll know exactly where to put it. I think under the pocket. That's what we'll do. Right at the bottom of the pocket. And that's about where I pressed it. Hopefully that'll look good. All right. So here is the ball. And we'll put it right here. We're winging this. We've never done um, bling on the pants or sweatpants before. So this is my dad coming up with stuff. He did his logo DTF on pants, but he did not do um, rhinestones. Because, of course, he, he doesn't want to wear rhinestones, but he wanted them for my mom. Because he knows my mom likes to wear the bling. So, all right, y'all. It's at 350. So, we're going to bling these um, sweatpants to the tracksuit. I thought I was going to be able to bling the tracksuit jacket, but can't bling the tracksuit jacket because um, That logo is too big for the jacket. All right, uh, let's see how this looks. That SS6 blinging, y'all. That's super cute. It's going to be cute on her pants leg. That turned out really nice. That's cute. So the hyacinth in the middle of the wall, and that's crystal AB around the outside. So I think that's going to. I think she's going to like that. And we're going to do the same thing for her jacket. Um, but I guess I'm going to have to do it later because I don't have the right size logo design for the front. It's too big. And um, I haven't cut the other wording out that was supposed to go on the back. Even though no look could go on the back. I don't know. I'll have to ask my dad. And my phone is dead, so I can't ask him. So, guess we'll go back to the hoodies. The bling was nice while it lasted. So I'm going to stick this here for now. And where's the other ball? It fell. So I'm going to stick the other ball right here for now. So that I can get to it later. And I'll get to it later. All right. So, let's grab hoodies out of this box over here. And at least this will put me closer to finishing up this order because it has been a while since I took this order and I've been doing y'all's orders, filling y'all's orders instead. Okay, so here's another hoodie. I don't know what size this is. Oh, wait a minute. Let me pick this up. Don't want to leave rhinestones laying around. We don't waste rhinestones around here. That ain't how we do things around here. All right. Let me get my water. Put it back here. And watch me forget where I put it. Let's put that up. Let's put this up. Let's put this up. Let's put this. All right. So this is a extra large pull this down some all right so for hoodies or their hoodies um hoodies are a beast a whole different beast when it comes to doing logos on hoodies right so for hoodies in a lot of instances or, or shirts, rather. For shirts, in a lot of instances, we would go um, center chest, okay? And, of course, as I've mentioned, center chest is across the front of the boob. Boob with bra on. And um, the armpit is basically where center boob should be. Um, unless you're 
apparently over 40 and boob area changes, but that's a whole different subject. Um, so what we want to do is with a hoodie though, if I do center chest, well, that's going to put the, um, based on the armpit rather, if I do center chest based on the armpit, that's going to put the center of the logo in basically the top of the stomach area, um, which is where the top of the hoodie pocket is. And that's not what we want. So this is a good time to note to those who may not know, with sweatshirts and with hoodies, your arms are bigger. The arms are much wider on those shirts. So using the armpit as the center of the chest won't work. They work perfectly for t-shirts, but not for sweatshirts. Let me see if I have a t-shirt right here that I can um, show you as a for instance. And I probably don't because I've moved, whoops, sorry puppy. I've moved all the t-shirts that I've blinged the last couple of days and gave t-shirts to my daughter. Let's see if there's a shirt over here. Um, Let's see, is this t-shirt? Yes, it is, girl. Yes, it is. Okay. And it's an extra large, I think. No, it's a large, but even still, it doesn't matter. So let's show you. Notice here's a t-shirt. This is the one we made for the do flatchy. And I think this is the one, Mr. Mo no, he didn't wear this one. I wore this one. Okay. So if I put the neck up where the hoodie is and I stretch out the arm sleeve, this is a unisex t-shirt. This is not a um, women's cut or anything like that. This is unisex. I don't, I don't like a women's cut t-shirt. Um, but notice where the armpit is. This is center chest on a t-shirt. But notice where the armpit is on the hoodie. It's way down here. So it's much farther than up here. So you've got a full, what's that, almost two, three inches difference. Um, two and a half, two and a half inch difference from where center chest is. So you, you can't use the armpits on your hoodies or your sweatshirts because of how much larger the armhole is. So that being the case, we kinda, I tend to center my um, hoodie designs based on the difference from the top of the pocket to the bottom of the neck. That's usually what I go off of as a good rule of thumb. So when in doing embroidery and lining up stuff, a lot of times I try to use what's there to make my life much easier and it tends to help. So if we go from neck down to the top of the pocket, it's almost 15 inches. So I'm going to center it um, as best as I can between those two so that I don't have to do a whole bunch of math. And 15 inches would be seven and a half. So right in here is basically where the center chest i'm sorry not center chest but center of a larger logo can go but because this logo is a narrow logo am i saying that right it's a wide it's wide but it's not as tall as far as top to bottom so i can actually move it up just a little bit so i'm going to move it up actually an inch okay so coming down seven and a half from here and i'm going to move it up to six and a half and that's where i'm going to put it the only reason why I'm doing that is in my mind, I'm looking at my customer's logo and I'm kind of looking at how, in my mind, how that logo is going to look on this shirt. You need to do the same thing, okay? So when you're doing a logo, especially if it's a narrow logo, like for instance, Supreme, it was a, a, a popular one and it was a skinny logo. It was like top to bottom, it might've been two inches but it was, it could go pretty wide. Well, that's not really going to look good down at the bottom of the chest. So that particular logo, I would bring up to more the top part of the chest, kind of around where a left chest logo would go. That's kind of where I would put that type of logo. But this is a wider, deeper logo than the one that's the Supreme. As a matter of fact, let's see how deep this particular logo is because I, I really don't know how tall this logo is. Let's see. So this logo from top to bottom, you're looking at five and a quarter is how tall this is. 
Whereas, you know, like I said, Supreme might be, might be two, two and a half inches wide. So you need to play with the placement um, and do what looks best. And the more narrow logos look better higher than they do going down low. All right. So like I said, with this particular logo, I'm going to put it six and a half inches down. I'm going to get my chalk that I have set somewhere. Not far away, but I have sat it somewhere. My trusty chalk. Come out, come out wherever you are. There you are. Let's get things lined up. Okay. So first thing I want to do is mark my placement from top to bottom on this hoodie, which I said six and a half, which is going to be about right there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is line it up and put me a nice straight marking point um, from side to side. Now, this particular ruler is too short, so I'm going to grab my longer ruler, which works better for extra large shirts. And then I'm going to measure, and it's still not quite wide enough, I'm going to measure side to side. Where's my line? Right there. Measure side to side. Try and get it as even as possible, which would be Marilyn's favorite part, the ruler. And then we're going to mark my center, which is 12 inches side to side because this is a 24 inch ruler. All right. Now that I have my center line marked, I'm going to try my best looking at this hoodie. Now, this is how I do it, but that's I'm, I'm weird like that, is I'm going to try and get this ruler lined up and even. Now, one way you can do it, which I think I've seen Marilyn do this, I'm not sure, but one way you can do it is you can use a second ruler and measure from one next seam down, which that's like nine and three quarters. Let's go over here, and that's nine and three quarters. So we know it should be even if I were to draw a line and straight on this shirt, um, you can measure from the side, wherever, whatever makes you happy. But the side next side of the, the next scene generally is a, a fairly easy point. But this is the, the tricky thing with hoodies that a lot of people don't realize. Hoodies pockets sometimes are crooked, especially depending upon if it's a, a inexpensive hoodie brand. All right, and that being the case, depending upon where your logo is and the structure of your logo, how can I put structure of your logo? What's the best way to put structure? So for instance, if I did the bling is my thing logo on this shirt, and I don't even see the template right here. It's probably over there and I don't feel like digging it out. Yeah, I don't feel like digging it out. So if I were to put that logo right there, there's a box going all the way around that logo. And that box is straight. So if I were to measure from here to the ruler, here to the ruler, and that tells me that this is straight, but I put that box down here. I don't know if you can see it, but looking at this ruler in comparison to, let me see if this if this will work for you. In comparison to the edge of this pocket, the edge of this pocket is doing it's actually going up like that and then back down to the ruler so the, it's kind of crooked but look at the relation of that ruler to this ruler and if i were to measure from here to here and there to there this side is going to be wider you can see that it's slanted so if you have a logo or an embroidery design or a bling design you know and it has some form of a border down here closer to the bottom of the hoodie pocket or a word even something as simple as a word that goes straight along the bottom and you put it straight based on the measurements up here is going to look crooked to the customer because their eye is going to look at that hoodie pocket and they're going to look at that in relation to the design so sometimes you may have to adjust the uh, orientation of your design like this might be perfect, but I might have to move it just a little bit to make it technically off up here, but because it'll match with the pocket down here because it's 
it's got some some area down here that's straighter to the bottom you want the eye to go off of that now if the pocket is like way off crooked then that's just the part of the hoodie the hoodie the hoodie is defective um and sometimes some companies will take those hoodies back sometimes all right but at any rate saying all that to say there's a lot of factors that you need to keep in mind when you're trying to line up an embroidery design. So a lot of you in here do embroidery, okay? And a lot of you do embroidery on a industrial machine and for a business. How do you line up your hoodie embroidery designs? What do you go off of? Do you go off the measurement from the top or do you measure it from the pocket? How do you do it? Way out in the comments. I want to know what you think and how you do it. Um, because there's no wrong or right way. There really isn't. There really isn't. Because a lot of it is going to depend on your customer. Because I could line it up to where it's perfectly straight. But if that customer looks at it in relation to that hoodie pocket and it's not centered, that customer could tell me it's not right. I don't like it. And I have to redo it and line it up to what makes sense for them. They're the ones paying for it. Not me. All right. So how do you do yours? I would love to know. So this one is already marked and I am going to use the bigger hoop for this project, which this uh, hoop, I don't have stabilizer pre-cut for it. So I'm going to have to cut some stabilizer. But this is the um, hoop that I use for that big logo. And this goes on the six needle. So I'll be using the six needle embroidery machine again. Um, so I need to cut stabilizer. So let me move this out of the way and we will proceed to get our stabilizer cut. And I ordered some black stabilizer from Madeira and um, this is what I tend to use on a regular basis for my stabilizer. Sometimes I'll use um, the stabilizer at Tex-Mac. It just depends on if I'm already ordering thread from Madeira, I'll just go ahead and order the stabilizer. Um, a lot of it depends on what I got going on. All right. And while I'm getting ready to cut this, I'm going to check the chat. Let me get my rolly. So, that, hey, Barbara Bonaparte. Hey, youngsters, clothing. Welcome. Let me scroll back up and make sure. Sharon Davenport, Coastal said, Kingstar Items. Hold on. Oh, okay. Um, where can you order the Kingstar items? The Kingstar items are with D I M E. Designs in Machine Embroidery is the name of the company. I'm pretty sure I have a link in the description for DIME products anyway. So if you click that link, it'll take you to the main website and you can look for your uh, King Star metallic embroidery thread. So King Star right there. Okay. And like I said, it's DIME. It's Designs in Machine Embroidery is the acronym DIME. Um, and like I said, they do a lot of support for the single needle embroidery machines. Absolutely love them for that. Um, because a lot of folks don't necessarily support the single needle community is heavily, but they have just about everything they have is for the single needle community. And I love that. Um, order the Regal and Siesta glitter and thread sets from DIME. I'm thinking about Mother's Day and Autumn. Ooh, that Autumn would be pretty. Coastal set. Sorry, Coastal set. Um, hey, Nicole Reeves. Hey, Granny Hamilton. How are you? Do you sell templates for stones? I do have two. I only have two, though. Um, on my store. It's the babiesbooty.store. But if you want some really good templates, um, Marilyn, I don't think she's a, if Marilyn and Patrice should, I hope they're still in here. Um, they both have um, uh, rhinestone designs on sale, for sale on their Etsy store. Um, and then we got a couple of other designers if you're interested. I only have two right now. I'm not good. I'm just now starting to do um, uh, rhinestone designs. So I only have two available. And the first one, I didn't, the McQuackens one, I didn't even do that one. 
uh, the one where it says bling is my thing is the one that I did. And it's not perfect, but it was my first time doing one. Um, let's say Sharon Davenport. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Um, let's see. Tina C. Hey, Tina C. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Hey, Ashita. Hey, youngsters clothing again. Let's see. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, Barbara Bonaparte. Welcome. Hey, Kirsten. Welcome. She said, hey, y'all. Hey. Eve, send me the address so I can come hang out. <laughs> Look, come on. I'm I'm like got a migraine, so I'm just like barely here <laughs> type situation. That's why I'm like dressed all the way down right now Um, because I'm just like I'm over it. But I need to get this order done, especially these hoodies. I've had them for a while and I need to get them done. Um, uh, hey Danny Doer, how are you? Welcome, my dear. Um, I've never done a sweatshirt or a hoodie, Kevin. Oh, they're easy, they're easy to do. They're easy. I use a T square to measure. I have the conversation convert conversation with the customer as to where they want the embroidery. Barb says, Thank you. She uses a T square. Um, I'm not good with measuring things, so I don't use the T square, but um if you do you have a um video miss barb showing how you measure with your t-square that would be cool if you could show that christmas says i was only half listening sorry what was the question about sweatshirt embroidery oh if you do hoodies um how do you measure where to put the placement center chest for your hoodies um you are okay marilyn put the link for your store please ma'am if you don't mind so that she can go there and by rhinestone designs let's see who is that let me scroll back up it was i don't i don't lost it oh granny hamilton granny hamilton was asking about rhinestone designs and i only have two one of which i didn't even make um but i do have two designs that i sell on my website and as i learn and do more i'll sell more before right now that's it all right so i did this one i'm gonna cut another one so that it's already in processing of being cut let's put it right there let's put it right there and we're gonna cut on who are you six to eighteen All right. All right. So let's move this out of the way. Slide this over for the time being. I'm going to put this out of the way for the time being and move this for the time being. And with this one, I'm going to cut off a little bit off the edge because this is a little too wide. And I only have limited space inside the hoodie. So I'm just going to cut that off. Okay. And now let's bring back over the hoodie that we marked. Put it right here. And I'm going to reach up in this hoodie and try to get that stabilizer right in this general vicinity. So let's grab the stabilizer. Now, if I, which I've been meaning to get it, and I keep I keep forgetting to order it, y'all. Um, you remember how I showed you the stabilizer holder for the five and a half inch square? They have one for this square as well. That would help me tremendously because then I could put the stabilizer holder on here. It will hold the stabilizer and then shove it up in the sweatshirt and it will hold everything in place. But guess what? I haven't ordered it. So I need to, I just haven't done so. So we're gonna have to do this, not the hard way, but the manual way. Um, because I could bring up my um, hoop station. The Mighty Hoops hoop station is downstairs in the basement um, with my embroidery, other embroidery machines and sewing machines, but I don't feel like doing that. So I'm going to do it manually even though it would be good to show y'all the Maya hoops and um, the hoop station. It's awesome. It's all how it works together. But I'm being a tad 
lazy. I'm not feeling my best right now. So a stupid migraine is sapping my energy. So, and I took a tried to take a senior nap today, y'all. It did not work. Actually, made the headache worse. Oh, y'all. Oh my god. Wait till I show y'all what I bought. Because I was desperate a couple of weeks ago. I was remember I had a migraine for like the whole week. I couldn't get rid of that migraine for nothing. Um. And I went on Amazon and I was just looking up migraine relief stuff and I found something that's super cool. And so I bought it, but by the time it got here, the migraine was gone. So I never used it, but I used it last night because I kind of felt a migraine coming on last night. <clears throat> and so I pulled it out. and I was like, let me see if this thing works. When I tell y'all. I really don't understand how I've gone all this long time in my whole life and never had this before or seen anybody use it or ever had one used before. Oh my gosh, y'all, it is amazing. It is amazing. And it's not just for headache, migraine, um, although it's perfect for that. But I even let Mr. McQuackens use it. He sat there with my thing on and went to sleep. And I was like, you see, can't have nothing. You, you just can't have nothing to yourself. So I ordered him one today and I'm um, hoping it'll come in a little bit because he's like, I like this. I bet you do. It's mine. No, you can't use it. I'm going to be hogging my stuff. But I'm going to go get it and show it to y'all here in a sec. Let me get this thing lined up. All right. All right, there we go. Center City. As centered as we cityly can. Okay, so it's a little bit off on this side. So I'm going to pry this back up and pull this down with it pried up. You remember on the chef coats, I didn't even take the thing up. I just um, stretched it even though it's not stretched it, but I pulled it while the hoop was clamped in place because that fabric doesn't stretch. This fabric stretches. So you don't want to pull this fabric with your hoop in place. If you need to do any adjustments, you need to lift the hoop so that that fabric, as you pull, it can do the counter, you know, the other end pull in as well so that everything will stay nice and not stretched is the word. I'm, I don't know a word for that. But I'm going to come under here. I'm going to check my stabilizer and feel it. You hear that drum from the backside? It's perfect. So I'm going to go and put this on the embroidery machine. And then I'm going to grab the thing I was telling y'all about because it is super cool. And show y'all what I got off of Amazon. Because I just think it's the bee's knees personally. And let y'all see it. Um... Every time I measure is crooked, so I use eyeballs. I do too, Chris Smith. Um, I generally don't measure, so I, I go off of the way it looks. Um, uh, she was here, she might be leaving work now. Uh, I missed that. I'm an eyeballer, but four to five fingers down from neck. If raglan sleeves, I move up some. Oh, me and raglan's, I'm not a fan of raglan because you can't measure anything normally with raglan. So I like that suggestion. Thank you. Matter of fact, let's put that up so that other people can see it. I also discuss with the customer, but most of the time customers let me do it my way. That's cool. Because sometimes um, customers are like that. You just do, you are the expert and da, 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 da. And I'm like, okay, but when this comes back and you say you don't like it, me and you're going to have words. So, yeah. Uh, hey, Life with Hina. Welcome. Um, I don't. I think I can drop a link. Oh, okay. I'll I'll grab it then. I don't have a video, but T-shirt chick has a couple videos on measuring with the T-square. I use the same one she has. Okay, cool. So if y'all go check out T-shirt chick, she has a video on how to measure for logo placement with the T-square. So definitely check her out. Um, are the uh, roads icy? Oh, you you know I forgot y'all are up north, so yeah. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, cool. So I'm going to, did I see the sweatshirt one on there? I think I did. So I'm going to put this on and set this to go ahead and stitch. 
and then I'm going to go grab the other thing. Okay. So give me one moment. Let me drop this and then I'm going to bring this. I got to go back in the room and grab it. So give me a sec. Let me get this um, on the machine. I apologize for leaving y'all in the lurch, but I have got to show y'all that because that thing is so cool. So, 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 so stinking cool. Okay, hold on. Setting the machine. Let's go here. Let's go here. And is that the right one? No, that is not the right one. So let's go here, here. Let's see. You know what? And that's the wrong one, too, in a way. But you know what? No, I'm going to find the one that I fixed. Give me a sec. I'm going to switch the camera as soon as I get back with the thing. Hang on. Let me get my water cooler on that. I'm going to sit down. It's starting to get up my nerves. Let me switch the camera to over here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, darn it. I left my mouse all the way over here. Okay, I'm coming. Right here. See, I need my mouse. Trackball, whatever. Hold that up by the shoulder. It really looks crooked. Oh, I will. Right now, I ain't super worried about it. Honestly, so I got, um, even though I probably should be worried about it, but I'm not. I'll take it here in a sec, though. I'm kind of tired. It's getting on my nerves, so that's why it ain't bothering me as bad. But at any rate, let me show y'all what I got from Amazon. Actually, let me pull it up first because I want to show you where I got it from. And drug oh, actually, hold up. Let me put Marilyn's link to her. Etsy store first in the thing. And then I'm going to put Patrice's link to her Etsy store. And then how do I find uh, oh Let's do it this way. I know how to find it. Let's go here. Because I bought a design from Marilyn. So that will, here it is. Marilyn's merch. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to put her link in the chat. So if you want, um, hey, Spyrox 346. So if you want any of her rhinestone designs, she has gorgeous rhinestone designs. So check hers out. That's for, uh, where are you, Grandma? Uh, I think it was Grandma. What was it? It was Granny. Granny Hamilton. So that's Making with Marilyn. And then we're going to put in Craftable Things. Here she is. Uh, Okay. I don't know why it won't give me like the, the link link that's retarded. Okay, so let's go there. That one is for Patrice and you can check out her rhinestone. She has cute rhinestone designs too. So definitely um, go and check out the both of those ladies. They have fantabulous stuffs. I'm following her. So I, well, I don't even know how to get oh, there's the heart favorites. Okay, duh. I could have found you that way. I didn't see it at first. Okay. 
And now this part to show y'all what I ordered for my headaches. Come on, fam. Let's see. Orders. There it is. And we'll make this bigger. Okay. So. All I'm going to say is. I needed this a long time ago, all right? And usually, now, another problem with me with my migraines, my migraines are dumb. They move. So sometimes they're here. Sometimes they're back here. Like, right now, it's back here. It's at the back of my head. So, like, I really want an ice pack back here, but I don't have, I ordered a thing today. It was, like, 15 bucks. It's like a, a toboggan almost, and it's a ice gel ice pack all the way around, and you put it in the freezer. And then you put it on when you have a migraine, which is going to be okay, but it's not quite what I need. I would rather have one that the gel pouches, I can put them where I need them because I don't want this frozen and this back here frozen. You know what I'm saying? But Mr. McQuack is like, you need to order it. I saw it on Shark Tank and blah, blah, blah. so I went on and ordered it. But um, that's that thing. And I don't have that yet. So right now, I'm just going to have to lay on an ice pack. But this thing, you don't have to have a migraine. Like, this thing is a treat every day, right? So, it's this. This is called Ren, Renfo. Renfo. Can you see that? There we go. Renfo. And... Finally, I'll sweet let my people go. So I don't know. You're welcome, uh, Marilyn and Patrice. I don't. It's a stop pain for migraines. I don't know the name of it. Top chop chop topical topical for the outside. Okay, let me know what brand it is. I don't know what that is, but this right here, Renfo. So you put it on right. This fool thing has built into it massage thingies and music and heat right so the part that's up against your eyes the squishy part on the inside has heat and when you turn it on i don't know that you heard that it's like please close your eyes relax and enjoy and i don't know can you see that see it moving Can you hear the music? And it is actively massaging my freaking eyes. And now the vibration, I don't usually use the vibration part. The vibration part is annoying to me, but it's like right now it's pressing into my eyes right there. And it's pressing in right there and squeezing and pressing in at the same time. I mean, this thing is, is pressing in here, back here at my temples, and then it'll roll to the front. Of my, oh my God, I love this thing. And the whole treatment session, whatever, lasts for 15 minutes. So technically, I'm supposed to be kick back in the recliner, lay back somewhere, quiet, and just letting the miraculous wonder of face massage do its thing for 15 minutes and listen to the little chimey music. Love this thing, y'all. Absolutely. I mean, you see it? It's so cool. And the little thing talks to you in your ear. See, it's just a squishy pad on the inside. It's smooth. And it it massages your eyes, just like the darn massage chair at the nail parlor. 
type situation and you can oh my god and you can turn up or down the intensity bestest thing ever okay bestest absolutely love it so i done told mr mcquacken is that i'm just darn about ready to do a massage chair with the thing actually i i'm not a fan of the the chair I love the massage on the legs. I had a leg. I, I did the leg massager thing at the mall. Love that. So a leg massager and one for the back of my neck. You know, like if I could lay on something and it massaged just my neck and the back of my head, not my back. I don't really want my back massage. I don't like because I have fibromyalgia, so it hurts to massage my back. But my right here with these things and the back of my neck and the back of my head. And my legs, oh my God, y'all wouldn't be. So anyways, I let this man wear my thing. I was like, here, try it, try it, try it. Why did I do that? Try it, try it. I want you to try this. This is so cool. And I put it on him. He went to sleep with my thing on. Fam, you were supposed to feel it and see how it felt and give it back. And I go to sleep with my thing on. Give me my stuff. I like that thing. I bet you do. So I'm getting him one at some point in time. But this is it right here. This is the mask, and it does come with the little mocha patrol. And um, so you can use the mocha patrol to control it after you turn the power button on, of course. But as you see, you just I don't know why these heifers is laid out like that. That just that ain't, but yeah, down here, yeah, for sure. You feeling like that? Put this on, all that'll change. Absolutely, love it. and it plays the little the little soft music you know, meditation kind of like music or whatever, anything, or you can Bluetooth connect it to your phone and you can put your music in it or whatever you want to hear in it while it's doing the whole thing. I haven't done that yet. I didn't care for that. I was in pain. So I just let it do whatever it needed to do. But yeah, just like you see her laying there, you lay back, that heat comes on. It's not too hot. It's a nice warm heat over your eyes. And then you just sit back and it let like i said it does for 15 minutes and then after that she tell you session completed wait one minute before you open your eyes unless you mr mcquackens and you done went to sleep and it don't matter um and like i said it's it's really cool really 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 cool it doesn't do cold now i did see one that will cool as well but i didn't i couldn't swing that one um so I just got this one, but it's really cool. I love this. And if you can swing it and use it, I would definitely, like, if you get tension up in here a lot, get it because <laughs> it feels great. And like I said, you can turn the intensity up and down. So, so far, I just absolutely love it. Um, Marissa says, I need one of those. I have a back massager and a foot massager I use every night I can. I love it. I mean, I'm just saying, oh, drop the link. Duh. I didn't think of that. I thank you. If I ain't had dimps, I don't know what I would do, y'all. I swear I don't. Um, let's see. Let's get the link. It's right here. Y'all need, I swear, if you can swing this, get it. I love this thing. Love this thing. They got them in black, they got them in white. I even saw a pink one. Who cares about the color? Because you ain't going to see the color when this sucker is on your eyes, rubbing your eyes to heaven. It's you just not. So the color is for other people. It ain't for you. So it don't matter the color. Just get it. I love it. They have, like I said, they got a couple different kinds, but this is the one I bought. And you plug it up, you charge it. Like when you, when you, the right here at the very bottom, you see the little charger port. It's the old timey USB kind. So you just open it and then you plug it up. So far, I've put, when I bought it, nah, fam, I say it turn off. Thank you. Um, so when I bought it and got it home, like I said, it sat there. I didn't even open the box till last night when I was just needing some help so i opened the box and i was going to plug it up i was going to use it actually hold on i was going to use it and i was like oh man i just bought it so it ain't even going to be charged for me to use it so i was sad 
I was like, you know what? Let me try it anyway. Man, this sucker lasted for that 15 minutes and it still wasn't dead. So I don't know who charged it before I got it, but I'm just so grateful to them because it allowed me to be able to use it out the box and put it on. Um, so hopefully it'll be charged for you out the box, but even if it ain't, plug it up, charge it, and it just let it do its thug fizzle because I promise you it's worth that 15 minutes. <laughs> Oh, it was so blissful. I love this thing. Love this thing. So if it helps me sleep, it helped Mr. McClacken. Where did my video at? I was like, you know what? Use oh 30%. I can turn it on now. Even though it's 10 o'clock, so my daddy is asleep now, probably. <sighs> I have to text him and see. But if I can find that video, I'll show y'all. I was like, at first it was funny. He went to sleep with my thing on. But then I thought about that thing and I'm like, wait a minute. That's mine. Give me my stuff. Um, your description is how it's yes. I one of the reviews on a different one that's really similar to this one, somebody said it helped with their sinus pressure. Um, I don't get that often, so I don't know. Um, but the heat, I do know the one time I did one of the times I remember having a sinus infection, the heat helped. So this does have heat in it. It does heat up. It said, uh, how many degrees did that thing just say? 107 degrees. So that's warm enough to be soothing, but not too hot to burn you and not kind of like not hot enough. Is It feels great. It feels absolutely great. I love this thing. Like if I could get one for everybody, I would because I love this thing. Look, look, look at this mess. Wait a minute, let me see. Look at that. Sleep in my stuff, y'all. Snoring, you hear? Him? I was like, man, just give me my stuff. But he loved it. He loved it. So. I was like, I can see it now, him saying, oh, well, use your thing, because we both get headaches. Um, I can see him wanting to use it, and then I'm going to be sitting there like, but I want to use it, and we just going to be at odds with each other, and I'm going to win, because I'm the one that got it. But I'll give in to him, because I would want him to feel better before I feel better. So that's a loving wife. Um, Let's see. Check my email when I get a say. Which one? Because, unfortunately, I have 15 emails. Let's see. I'll check this one first. And see what you are saying to me. He's like, this belongs to Bubba. Not no more. Because I done ordered him one, ma'am. I sure did. Because we ain't playing that game around here. Because when I want to rest, I'm going to rest. Let's do that, one. that email. Here it is. Okay. Okay, that works. Um, so I am flying into Detroit, um, you guys, next weekend. So I will be landing in Detroit. Um, I want to say it's going to be 7 p.m. Let me check. Um, let's see. Oh, here it is. No, no, that's not. That was last year. How do you find it on this thing? I hate that about this thing. It's hard to find my stuff. All right. Somewhere on here is going to tell me where my trip is. Um. You know what? I'm just going to go to my email, my calendar. It's on my calendar. That's where it is because it automatically puts it there. So I'll be flying in. Six seventeen. So six o'clock, I should be getting into Detroit. So by the time we get off the plane, get out of the airport, go to the hotel, um, so at the airport, it'll probably be about seven o'clock. 
because I'm not bringing luggage or anything like that. I'm not going to be there that long. So it'll just be us, me and Mr. McQuackens and just us. So then we will, I might bring an overnight bag, might. But at any rate, that's a horse of a different color. So then we're going to, um, Be there overnight. And we're not leaving until Sunday evening. So basically 24 hours I'll be in Detroit. Yeah, it's 24 hours I'll be in, in Detroit. So if you're in the Detroit area, holler at a heifer because Sunday... Um, i say around about noon, I'll be at the hotel. We'll be available. And just email me at thebabiesbooty at gmail.com if you're going to be in the area. And maybe I can, um, you know, tell you guys where I'm at. And you can come and holler, okay? Now, I'm not bringing bling, not at all. Because um, this is actually a family trip. I'm going to go get my uncle, my great uncle, who is 90-something. And um, he, last year when I went to get him, it was his first time flying. So I'm going back up there again because he's he doesn't know how to navigate the airport. So I want to make sure he gets back here safely. So I'm going to go escort him back um, to Charlotte. So I would love if you're in that area to see you and say hi. Um, and I know there's one place Mr. McQuackens wants to go. Now, whether or not we go there or not, I don't know. Uh, but we'll figure that out. And I'll arrange that with that person. But the rest of the stuff and the rest of the folks, please let me know if you want to come say hi. Especially if I didn't get to see you here in Charlotte when you can, you know, when I was, when we had the thing. I'd love to see you. So, hey, uh, Borakua, how are you doing and how is Milo? <laughs> um, You're welcome, gorgeous Rose. Let's see. <laughs> hey, Andrea T, hopefully you got my email, my dear. Embroid print now. Hello. Oh, so that's not a bad price. Right. Right. It, I was I was expecting a whole heck of a lot more for something like that. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you what I thought. When I found it, I just thought it was just gonna be pressure. I didn't know when I bought it that it was gonna be doing heat and all that stuff. Because like I said, when I bought it, I was in pain. And I was just like, please, Lord, let me find something to help me with these stupid migraines that will put some pressure, right? And so I saw it, and I was like, okay, hopefully that'll put pressure. So I bought it. And it came, and I was like, massage? What the heck? You know, and so I opened it up and put it on. That was crazy. That was last night. That was like a wow factor for me. So, yeah, I absolutely love it. Um, I'm with you on that. I tell my kids it hurts to massage my back with fibromyalgia. Yeah, fibromyalgia is is unfortunate, and it makes a lot of things that should be normally nice for people extremely painful. So, um, like I can't um do when I go get my nails done and or toes because that's the only thing I don't get my nails done, and they reach over. I'm in the pedicure chair and they reach over to push that stupid remote control on my chair to turn it on. I'm like, no. And they, you know, massage. No, I don't want a massage. It hurts. And they looking at me like I'm crazy. No fam. It hurts. Don't turn that on for me. I can't stand it. Oh, I'd be in pain. So, but at any rate, Mello, the supervisor, Mello isn't allowing you breaks. <laughs> Him so cute though. You work in Christmas orders. That's awesome. That is awesome. Give him his customary treats for being a good supervisor. Hey, Jay Love. Welcome. So, yeah, if you are in the Detroit area, holler at a heifer if you want to. I mean, it's no pressure. And um, I'd love to say hi. Meanwhile, if you are like me and stress the heck out and need some relief, get one. I'm, you're not going to want to share it. I'm just letting you know that now. For whomever purchases one, you're not going to want to share this thing. It feels amazing. And it it is crazy because this dumb thing, well, I don't want to call it a dumb thing. It was massaging areas 
I didn't even know I needed massage. Okay. Like, whoa, what is that spot? Rub it again. You know what I'm saying? That's how, yeah. Yeah. And I didn't realize how coming from back this part all and rolling all the God. Anyways, all I'm going to say is you need one. If you like me and you deal with headaches, you need one. You need one. You need one. Sorry. So, yeah. At any rate, thank you, Patrice, for getting you one. Let me know how you like it. Matter of fact, you know what we ought to do. <laughs> we going to have date night. And on date night, we gonna sit down and we gonna wear that for the first 15 minutes of the show. And everybody else that's got one can wear theirs for 15 minutes. And if they ain't got one, by the time our 15 minutes is up, they gonna wish they had one and they gonna go get them one. How about them apples? So, yeah. We gonna have us a 15 minute relaxation show. That's what we have to do. So, yeah. I'll be getting hand surgery in January or February. It depends on the surgeon's schedule. We have one hand surgeon in Virginia. Oh, no. Well, hopefully, um, hopefully it will work well for you and they will um, get to you right away and that you heal up super quickly. That's what we hope because hand surgery is no joke. My daughter's mother-in-law just had double carpal tunnel surgery and that was a whole fool she couldn't do anything um there's another that says for migraines is that one okay too I, this is the only one i matter of fact i'm telling y'all i was i'm I, I honestly to be quite frank i don't remember buying it i just remember being in pain going to amazon trying to find anything that would help me and for whatever reason that came up um so I bought this one. Like, I didn't shop around. I didn't go looking for this. I didn't even know it existed. So whether the other one is good for migraines or not, I don't know. Because I didn't even know this this type, this sorcery, I did not know was even a thing. And all I know is I'm glad the good Lord must have guided me to this thing. And he was like, here, my child, tired of you suffering. And I was like, thank you, Father. And so it showed up. And I'm just like, okay, bro, we finna try it. and. I didn't know. Matter of fact, when the thing was like heat, I said heat. Oh no, not the heat. We bringing the heat. Oh my goodness. And I was like, okay, we gonna try it. Put it on. It's a wrap. Love this thing. Love this thing. So yeah, definitely get one. Um, can't do a lot of stuff. Yeah, no, you can't. Not with fibromyalgia. Hello, everyone. What's the name of the item that helps with migraine? Susan Green. Um, let me paste that again. There's the link in the chat. Um, I don't know what the name of it is. This one is, is this brand is Renfo. I think R-E-N-P-H-O. Um, and I can show it again on eye massager. Eye massager. Didn't know that was a thing. Um, hang on, let me do this and share the screen again so that you can see it. Um, eye massager with heat compression, remote control, Bluetooth, eye and temple massage. Yes, it massages temples. Now, see, I knew massage temple massage was a thing. You know, you see on TV when they, you know, doing the whole circling thingy around people's temples. Didn't know that there was a way to massage all of this in the eyeball, too, man. I just... Listen, Linda, listen. Your life will be changed. That's all I'm going to say. It's going to change your life. I am a firm believer in eye massage now. Like, I I had, I have a, a friend of the family, a friend who does massages for people and she was like, oh, I got a massage I can do for you. And I'm like, look, fam, ain't no massage I can do because I have fibromyalgia. 
no, no, no. I know how to do it. It'll work for fibromyalgia, blah, blah. And I was like, nah, fam, it's not going to work because I know me and I know my body, but she was so determined. I was like, okay, fine. So my mom had her come and do a massage and it was okay. Some parts of it were okay. It wasn't tragic. Some parts were tragic, um, but I didn't want to like hurt her feelings. So I didn't tell her that, but some parts were tragic and I just, you know, kind of like dealt with it. But not man time did she massage a helpless eyeballs. Okay. This thing massaged my eyeballs. And I did not know that was a thing. So I am now a firm believer in the technique of eyeball massage. So yeah, you see that? See how she's smiling? You'll be smiling. If you ain't pass out. If you don't just just relax all the way to sleep. It's a little difficult. I think for me, it's a little difficult to go to sleep. The reason why for me it was difficult to go to sleep is because for me, noise wakes me up. I'm a I'm not a light sleeper, but I sleep to where if I hear anything, well, I guess I'm a light sleeper then. Because if I hear anything that don't sound right, I'm going to wake up because I don't play them games. Like, Stun gun right here. Who, who, what, where, what we fence to do. So noise kind of gets to me. So I'm, this isn't a different noise. Like I'm not you. And this is a super sensitive button. You're going to turn it on um, without intending to. But, um, and you just press it and hold it and it'll turn off. But anyways, you can hear the motor as it's you know doing the compression thingy to blow up the things to make it move animatronics or whatever is in here you can hear it so that sound might keep you from going to sleep but like i showed in the video old buddy back there went right to sleep like he had it on he was like "Ooh, i love this and i got a little bit of a headache too this feels great. You know, he was talking for the first, because like I said, the thing lasts for 15 minutes. He was talking for the first two minutes. I give him two minutes. The next thing I know, I said, is this fool snoring? And I stood there for a minute. And I said, well, maybe it was the mask I'm hearing. And I'm listening. And I hear him snoring. I said, I be John Brown. This man is actually snoring with my thing on, right? And so... At first, it was funny. So, like I said, I recorded it, and it was kind of funny. Um, and then after that, I was like, "Wait a minute, he doing the whole fifteen minutes with my thing." And uh, so I said, "Oh no!" Mm -hmm. So while he was finishing off his fifteen minutes, I was on Amazon ordering him one because no. And as soon as it cut off, because it'll cut off and it'll say session is co session is complete. Please wait one minute before opening your eyes, is what it says. And that sounded almost like that voice. And he was like, as soon as it cut off, oh, man. <laughs> he woke him up. He's like, I wasn't asleep. So a person who is just laying there, resting, snoring, is not asleep now, apparently. No, I was just, I heard myself snoring, so I wasn't asleep. Okay, fam. Anyways, so he loves it and he did go to sleep really quickly with it. So I like after about two minutes, he was out with that thing and it woke him up. So yeah, I sleep with the TV on. Okay, so you should be okay to go to sleep with this on. Like, but like I said, it only lasts 15 minutes. You can't turn the thingy up and make it last longer. I wish to God you could. My migraines cause me to be sensitive to light and sound. What type of sounds does this massager have? Okay, so no light whatsoever with it on it's pitch black and you know because there are some hold on there is one out there that i saw and there's like little indentations in the padding on the inside for your eye and your eye socket so it's like your eye is free to move or whatever but with this one there isn't that so it's pressed up against your eyes so like there's no light um first of all Second of all, it has the sound of the uh, motor as it's massaging the face. So 
Let me see if she turns on. Well, I turned on by accident how many times now? And now she ain't wanting to turn on. Please there she is. Relax and enjoy. Air pressure plus heat. You hear it? Can you hear that? I'm hoping I'm hoping this mic picks that up really good. So, and as you see on the inside, So it's not like irritating loud at all. And to be quite frank, to be quite frank, the pressure that it's applying to your eye area is so freaking smooth, soothing. It could be louder than that, I think. Like that's no, I mean, like that makes up for the vibration not the vibration but that the sound of the motor stuff in there moving um the music the little doom, doom, doom thing that it was doing the yoga soothing meditation whatever music that's built into it you can um turn it off you can turn it down you can turn it up but like i mentioned there this also has bluetooth so you can connect your phone to this and play whatever you want to play if you play anything you can play nothing um but like i used to go to sleep to the sound of um uh, thunderstorm used to love thunderstorm um i had a whole track that i would listen to at night and go to sleep two years ago when the kids were little um or it was either thunderstorm or it was the ocean waves i had both soundtracks um, so you could upload that and listen to that if you wanted to, because it has Bluetooth capabilities. This particular one does anyway. Um, so it also has a vibration feature, which adds to the noise of it. If you turn the vibration feature on, I don't use the vibration feature. So you can use this a couple of different ways. I, you know what? What's crazy to me is this has nothing to do with embroidery bling. Ooh, I can bling it out. It doesn't have anything to do with embroidery, bling, DTF, none of that. But this thing is amazing. And y'all women and men would benefit from it. I love this thing. But anyways, so you can use it in different modes. You can turn it on. Like when you first turn it on, it's automatically on heat, uh, pressure, music. Heat, pressure, music. You press it again and it'll go to, uh, you know what? I don't have a book. Let me see if the mode is on here. Because it, it'll it'll go from heat pressure music to heat pressure music massage, uh, vi vibration. Um, oh, heat massage music. Heat massage music vibration. Heat vibration. Vibration only. Heat only. Um, massage only so it's like you can once every when you turn it on it's in that first mode you press it again don't hold it the power button press the power just tap the power button again because it's just a it's touch sensitive so you touch the power button again it'll go to the next mode touch it again it'll go to the next mode touch it again it'll go to the next mode touch it again it'll go to the next mode touch it again it'll go back to the first mode you see what i'm saying um so it's up to you which mode you want it to be, but you can turn it to where it's just heat, which I thought was phenomenal. I don't, I guess that's 15 minutes too. Um, now it will not work with it plugged up. I'll tell you that. That sucks to me because I like want this thing to stay charged at all times. Um, but it won't work while it's plugged up. And like I said, it takes the um the old USB port. It's not the new. USB-C, this is the old USB um, charger port. 
So it has that. So if you have that, like I have one right here. You know what? I think I do have one right here. This next, this, I can plug this thing up now. Nope, that's the other plug. Crap. So you can plug it up and let it charge. And then um, I've used this since charging it this morning. I've used it twice. And then he used it that one time. So it works great. Um, uh, hey, Lakeisha Monique. Um, six SS lashes. I know, right? That would be cute, Marianne. That would really be cute. Um, hey, how are y'all doing? You sound like me with the rain, thunder, and ocean sounds. Yes, honey. I used to love that. Um, hey, S. Boone, how are you? Kevin Moore, yeah, to put you to sleep. That's relaxing me way up here in Fort Worth, Texas. I'm glad it works. Um, like that, just hearing it. But yeah, Karen B. Let's see. Last for days. That's um, I'm not sorry, Rosalind. My mom and I, Karen D. It was Karen D. My mom and I and her sisters get headaches like that. Like it's inherited. If the weather changes, we're getting. If it's going to rain in the next two, three days, we get migraines. Um, and so we kind of like have a joke about it where, you know, when one of us has a migraine, we'll say we have a bad head. So like if I put in the group text and I'm like bad head today, they know immediately that I got a migraine and they'll check on me and stuff a little bit later. Um, but my mom gets them more frequently than I do actually but yeah these migraines suck and last week was the first time in a while i had one for a whole week so they come and go um but when they're bad bad like they i can be crippled by them um to where like you say a head under the pillow and stuff like that but and and if it's just pain if it's just regular migraine pain usually i can deal with that but when I get that migraine pain and it burns, like the burning migraine pain, nah, fam, we finna go to the urgent care and we gonna get a shot. Because the burning migraine pain is like the worst of the worst for me. And I go get the Tordol and that helps tremendously. So that's what I have to do. Marissa says she plays the rain and ocean sounds for the kids every day at quiet time. Oh, that's awesome. Get them babies and learn that they there are ways to soothe yourself when you're not, when you want to rest. Because a lot of times these kids today don't understand the concept of calming yourself. So they don't know that they can actively calm themselves. Um, like the pacifiers from when they babies and stuff. Sandra Underwood, laughing out loud. I've been enjoying listening to you talk about that and how he was snoring but not sleep. So funny you made my day work in a 12-hour shift. <laughs> Have a good night, Jesse Gibson. Thank you for hanging out briefly with us. Um, yeah, that was that was his excuse earlier today, Chad. I'm just sitting here like, okay, whatever, sir, whatever. Um, and he uses that line a lot. You know, I wouldn't sleep. Okay, your snoring means nothing. Then I guess he swears his snoring means nothing. So Sunday tomorrow, when he in the chat. Ask him, do you are you still awake when you snore? And see what his response is. Because he swears he's actually not asleep when I know for a fact he is. And you know how it is when you're talking to somebody and you in conversation and they start snoring. <laughs> and I'm like, because we'll be laying there at night we go to bed or whatever and we're in discussion so how do you think the buy-in went buy-in went great blah blah what do you think i need to do to change or what am i gonna do this sunday what do you think we ought to do next sunday blah blah we're talking <laughs> and all of a sudden this knucklehead starts snoring and i'm sitting here like he didn't went to sleep on me and so i'll kind of keep talking and say something crazy and i don't get no reaction you was asleep. So then I'd be like, this man done went to sleep on me. And I actually said, I, no, I didn't. I wasn't asleep. I was listening. 
No, you were not, because you didn't hear the crazy thing that I said. Yes, I did, because you said blah, blah, blah. It wasn't the crazy thing. It was something long before that. It's like, just go to bed, man. Don't even, I was listening. And then a couple minutes later, he's sleeping in. I swear, these men folk get on your nerves sometimes. But at any rate, I love them. Love them, love them. So, y'all, I, um, what do I have left? I still got these, um, hoodies to do. And like she said, Chris Smith, I'm gonna check that one and make sure it wasn't crooked. But, because I did not hold it up like that and look at it. Because usually that's what I do to make sure stuff looks straight to me. Um, but that's why I said, actually, Chris Smith, that's why I said what I said about the pocket. Most people, when they look at a design and they look at it from the pocket up on a hoodie, it'll look crooked because the pocket is crooked. If that pocket is crooked, I don't care how straight your your line is up top, it's going to look crooked in relation to the pocket. That's annoying, but it's the truth. So you have to uh, account for that. And in some instances, even if you don't account for it, you have to choose which one is most important, you think, to your customer. Are they going to be more concerned about it being straight as far as the top of the shirt is concerned? Because the one thing about it, when a person puts their hands in the pocket, which a lot of people use the hoodie pocket, and it, they kind of generally rest their hands in that pocket, and it pulls the pocket down. So once you pull that pocket, it's not going to look as crooked anymore than it does just laying there on the table. So the way a person wears the shirt can actually help with it looking crooked versus it really with it not being crooked, but it is in relation to the pocket. Um, so that's why for me, I tend to just go ahead and straight have it hoop straight based on it actually being straight instead of having it based on the pocket. So yeah, I've been known to take it off and fix it and see that's dedication. I don't have that. <laughs> not for no. I'm not going to take that pocket off. Now, if it's mine, I might, but not like that. Now, if the pocket is bad off crooked, I'll take it back to the uh, wholesaler where I got it from and be like, look, fam, this is crooked. And a lot of times they'll swap it for me. They'll, they'll RM, RMA it, whatever they call it. They'll change it out. So I'm liking those nails. Even your skin looking small. Oh, thank you, hunty. Nails. This is, I, I need to paint them again. I got my... My polish, I need to paint them again. I'm just ain't. I ain't done it. I ain't done it, y'all. Hey, Shunna Smalls Willis. So, yeah, you guys, I'm just hanging out. I'm not doing any. Um, I did the shirt and the chef jacket. Um, bling the pants leg. That was it. Showed y'all my massage mask that, you know, all y'all need to have. I promise y'all need to have it in your life. I just... I don't know how I live without it this long. This thing is amazing. So please get you one. You ain't even, I put the link in the chat. You ain't got to use my link. I massage her on Amazon. Go get it. Okay. You need it. If you're a parent, you need it. If you're a grandparent to have the chat more than three hours a week, you need it. If you take orders from customers, you need this. Okay. If you're married, you definitely need it. <laughs> if your spouse says, I wasn't asleep, you need two of them so that you can have one for backup for when this one is charging because you're going to need it again while, you know, dealing with that. Um, so, yeah, you, you need one of these. And I need to look for me a neck massager, too, because like I said, I, I could very well use one of both at the same I could use them both at the same time because my usually it's top of back of my head at the top of my neck and down to the now once I get to my shoulders I can't do a massage there that hurts but the back of my head I can so if I can find me a back of my head massager man it's gonna be on like about the neck bones so yeah both show so what else is everybody getting into today I swear, I hate spam. Um, what else are y'all getting into today? I'm looking forward to doing some 
applique with you guys tomorrow, as I pointed out earlier, um, with the kit that came from DIME. Um, so hopefully you guys will be able to join us tomorrow for that. And what else? Um, we're waiting on packages of our rhinestones from this past buy-in to come in, and hopefully they'll be here sooner rather than later, and then we can start trying to get packages out because we are going to bust tail to get those packages out long before the 30 days. That's the plan. Just like last buy-in, Customs had a whole different plan for us. And Customs, well, one of our packages was routed to Japan. It's still on the way. You know what? I meant to check that. It's still on the way from Japan. And I'm trying to figure out, first of all, why is it going to Japan, period? I, I'm not Japanese. At all. So, there is no reason for that package to be headed to Oka, Okasaka. Japan, whatever Japan, I was just, I'm about ready to lay all kinds of folk out. Let's see. Osaka, Japan. It's still in Osaka, Japan. Osaka, Japan. I'm about ready to call headquarters for somebody to find my dang package because this is unacceptable. But at any rate, so sometimes things um, don't go quite as planned, unfortunately. Okay, so this package. Ooh, so one should be here Monday because we don't get packages on the weekend, unfortunately. So one should be here Monday. And then we will... Um, we'll have our stones, hopefully. Anybody, you know anybody in Osaka, Japan that can go and check on my stuff for me? I'd appreciate it. Because I'm about ready to throw hands. See, that's the type of stuff that you just put this on for. And have a glass of wine with a straw, bendy straw, as you are getting massaged. My PE 800 is fixed. Just waiting to get it back. It had timing issues, tension issues, and something wrong with the knob. Me creatively back him. I have a PE 770 that probably has the same issue. And I need to send it to get it fixed somewhere. Because it's getting, um, it keeps messing up. I finished cutting some templates. It was supposed to be blinging and a diamond painting didn't have the energy today. I understand. You know what? I do need to cut a template. Just got home a little while ago celebrating your granddaughter's 10th birthday. That baby hit the big one. Oh, tell her she's double digits now. And that's what's up. Getting ready to cut some on a laser. Oh my God. You're going to do You know what? You done pet me up. I was, you you heard me. I was losing steam. Shoot, I might have to put something on the lights. <laughs> oh my God. I love my laser machine. Do your mom have one? Also, does my mommy have what? Your solo? What's the solo, baby? Uh, solo. My brain is hurting. I got a, uh, I got a headache. So I don't know what you're talking about. The solo. 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 Starcraft? Is it sorry? No, it ain't the Starcraft. What are you talking about, um, Andrea, baby? Because I know you was waiting on, at one point you was waiting on the uh, heat press, the um, HDB runt. But I think you got that one. What's your solo, my dear? Or I can look it up because I don't, I don't know right now what solo is. But either way, congratulations. I can ring the bell for you today, but I'd rather ring it for you. No, I can't look it up because I don't know what the solo is. Um, I'd rather ring it for you tomorrow when we got a full house of folks. Starcraft solo code. Okay, cool. Starcraft. Okay, go ahead on, Miss Starcraft. I told you I was thinking about getting it. I don't know. We we tor I'm torn. I'm torn between 
Romeo, and the Starcraft. Still not sure. Still not sure which route I'm going to go. And the thing is, I got Prince. I don't want to get rid of him. I got um, Picasso. Don't want to get rid of Picasso because I know Picasso now. So it's just like, bro, what, what to do? Wait a minute. Isn't there a uh, silhouette that's in between the four and the pro that's a little bit bigger? I think there is. Hold on. Silhouette. Because if it is, I might do that instead. Silhouette America. Products. Cameo. Yes, they do have a 15 inch, y'all. I might do that instead. Because I don't want, I don't really care. I don't I don't need a 24 inch. I don't, I don't want to say I don't need a 24 inch. But 24 inch is overkill. Like, I don't think I'll ever go over 15 inches for a cutting machine. Um, because I don't do vinyl. And even print and cut. Even print and cut kind of won't matter because your my printing printer is only eight and a half by eleven, so there really is no need to do if I did that fifteen inch print and cut would the print and cut space be bigger y'all who knows does somebody have the uh cameo four plus please let me know if you have you do have Marissa so your print and cut. Can you print and cut bigger than so? What am I trying to say? You know the registration marks are, at the, but I think that'll still be the case though, because you got to print the registration marks. So the registration marks ain't gonna make no difference. I still will only be able to print and cut, um, with those registration marks. So it don't matter. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You have to have one or two backup cutters. I have three. Miss JB, I have Prince. I have Picasso back there. Then over there, I still have my original Cricut um, one because that one wasn't the air. That was before the air, the step before the air. I have the Cricut Air, and then I have, or not Cricut Air, Cricut 1. I have the Cricut 1, and then I have the Cricut Air 2. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, and I have the Cricut Joy, which is 5. I have 5 cutters right now. I have one that has been sitting in the box for months. Miss Rosalind, oh. I just want to go. I'm holding off on sublimation. I put my Janome 500E embroidery only on layaway. Okay, cool. 7.9 by 11 max. That's a good size for embroidery. Comes with four hoops. New price drop of $900. Yeah, that's a good size. So I have the Cameo Pro. It cut four. It cuts the 24 inches. So the 24 inches, y'all pretty much do um, vinyl. Oh, see, my thing is, uh, oh, massager. My mom, no Granny Hamilton. She does not. And I want her to try it. I want her to try the massager. So I'm hoping she'll charge it. Try, I mean, I'm hoping she'll try it. Um, Because, I, like I said, I just opened the box last night. And I I didn't even know it did all of that till last night when I put it on and pressed the power button. So that was crazy. I still have my Cricut Baby Bug. So, okay. That's my problem, y'all. I am so comfortable with Cricut. But I've become comfortable with the Silhouette software, that is. So, the Silhouette, I've been having a ball, you know, figuring stuff out and learning stuff, especially doing the class with Patrice and learning more features to this darn software is actually pretty cool. So that's why I'm considering doing the Silhouette Plus because I would like a little bit more space 
mainly for certain rhinestone designs because I somebody I can't think of who it is right now. I know Matt has bigger rhinestone flock, but somebody else carries a large roll of rhinestone flock, the, the taller roll. So I would love to upgrade and get a bigger cutter. But I love Prince. I love Prince because Prince is purple. And I love Picasso because I decorated Picasso myself. And you can't find a red silhouette no more. So unless you get it used or something like that. So I have that one. And I don't, I, I'm one of those closet hoarders where once I get something, it's hard for me to get rid of it. So for instance, my Cricut Air 2 and my Cricut 1, I'm considering giving to a friend of mine who has children. Um, she has four, five, five kids, um, two boys, but the three are girls. And so I'm like, give those kids something different, teach them how to make their own shirts, stuff like that, and give them something that they can do some craftsy type stuff with, you know, keep them something to do. So I'm considering doing it that way because then I don't feel so bad about getting rid of it. Whereas if I was to just take it to Goodwill, I would kind of feel bad, you know, because I'm like, okay, but I bought that, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm weird. So I, I have a hard time um, getting rid of stuff and it's caused me a lot of problems. Like even in here in the studio, I have stuff that I've bought extra of and it's just like why why did i buy so many of that like for instance um these there was a lady in um i need to finish this there was a lady in one of my groups i forget which one d stash wholesale group and she was like she had a order of these glass tumblers right and the tumblers have the hole built into it already Snow globe tumblers. Thank you. My brain just told me what it was. So she had an order of these snow globe tumblers. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll get some. Why did I get 15? Maybe, might, might be 10. I might have 10 of them in there in their box. Anyway, more than one. So, or more than two. Because two would have been just fine. But I ordered a whole cuss box of them for whatever reason. So now I will say this though. My mommy has a friend who unfortunately um, actually is, is more than my mom's friend because I've known her most of my life as well. But we have a friend that's not doing very well on hospice and she likes snow globes. So my mommy was like, can you, she saw somebody make a snow globe tumbler. She was like, can you make a snow globe tumbler? And I'm like, bet I got the perfect thing to make a snow globe tumbler it's already made, you know, but, and, and I meant to show it to her when she was here the other day. Um, the friend is still hanging on, but I started it so that I could finish it and make it so my mommy could take it to her and give it to her as a gift. But I never, I haven't finished it yet. So I need to finish it. Um, and I know why now I couldn't find my glycerin because I was going to do the glycerin method uh, because I like that better than the glue personally when I did my other two tumblers. But I don't know what I did with my darn glycerin. So at any rate, I was, uh, but this is saying all that to say a lot of times I buy stuff and I have entirely too much. I got tumblers down there at the butt. I have t-shirts more than any one human should really have because I don't necessarily wear t-shirts like that. I like sleeveless stuff like this because of my menopause. I get hot quickly and so I like to be able to cool off real quick. So you can put on clothes. You can't take off but so many things. Eventually you'll be naked and still hot. I don't like to be hot. Um... I don't know what I did with my glycerin, y'all, but I need the glycerin. I also bought the clear glue because some people like the clear glue method. And I don't know what I've done with none of that. So I need to. I got so much stuff. It's ridiculous.
I need to wear my eye. Let me, let me just, it, 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 I just need to wear my eye thing. That's all I need to do. Just wear it. <laughs> I just need to wear this. Um, Nikki Fuller. Hey, Nikki, welcome. Thank you for coming to hang out and let me know you were new. Just watching your embroidery video and seeing you was live. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate you hanging out and coming by to say hi. Um, we usually go live on Sunday evenings, normally not Saturday, but I was working. And so I was like, I'm going to tune in and see if folks want to come work with me. Um, you can print and cut up to 24 inches with Cameo before. Okay. But I still need to know how that works. Specialty graphics. Yeah. You sent me this. Well, no, you sent me the special. It wasn't special to graphics. It was the main company. Um, but yeah. Body sheet and rolls. The 24 inch rolls, that's what I was uh, talking about. Late to the lab, I go back and forth with the Cricut and Scanning Cut. Scanning Cut for appliques and quilting Cricut for vinyl. Oh, brother scanning cut. Okay, so my brother scanning cut, I actually did give away. I gave that to my daughter-in-law um, so that she would, because she has a cricket. Um, but I was like, here, why don't you try the brother and see if you like it? Because I was not a fan of the brother scanning cut. But I had the one somebody told. So from what I understand, there's two different kinds of scanning cuts, like a dealer version of the scanning cut. Like if you buy it at the brother store, a brother reseller, and then there's the find it out in the world scan and cut that doesn't have as many features as the dealer one. So the one I had was not the dealer one. So that's why I was limited in a lot of, I don't know. All I know is I was annoyed. I was over it and it wouldn't. Now, I did love my scanning cut when it came to cutting, like, stuff that I printed, and I just need to cut, like, stickers, and I just need to cut the border around them. Perfect for that. I didn't need a computer. I didn't need nothing. All I had to do was put it in and scanned it. It showed me where the circles or the, or the borders was going to go, and I was like, bet, do the borders, or told it to do the circles, or told it to do the rectangles, and it did it. And I was like, woo, love it. But other than that and i didn't cut stickers like that on the regular so i was like why do i have this so i got rid of it but um that's what i was using it for and loved it for that but aside from that i just i went on and gave it to her y'all i don't know what the ham sandwich i did with my glue or my glycerin i bet it, it might be right here in these drawers because I haven't done the waterfall tumbler in a minute. So, God, you know, I have too much stuff. I have entirely too much stuff. This is ridiculous. Like, I can't. Where's my eye massager? Y'all going to make me turn off the live and sit with my eye massager on. That's what y'all want to do. Uh... Okay, yeah, maybe it's in here because I see the baby oil. And here's the bottle. This is the bottle, the last. This was glycerin and uh, glow in the dark um, stuff. And then here's the baby oil. And I don't see the glycerin. Great. Oh, wait a minute. What is this? Oh. Yay! Ta da da! The lights are in. Coming to a snow globe near you. Okay. So, that being the case, I have glycerin, which I need to look up. There was so many parts to so many parts of water. And now I don't even remember what that was, but I can look it up. And then um, water, and then put it in here, and then seal it up. And what I need to do is go back and look at my video that I did, because I remember what, I, I said what the concoction was that I actually liked. 
when I made that snow globe thing, that other tumbler. Should I use this green? Since it's already already mixed up in some in here. This isn't green though. This is like a blue. So I don't think that's gonna work. I got another squeezy bottle somewhere. Because I just saw it earlier and knocked it down. So yeah, who does snow tumblers? I've been struggling and trying to decide between the StarCraft solo and the Romeo as well, leaning toward the Romeo. Um so yeah, I've been trying to figure that out. I still have my old crickets in my garage in the original boxes. I have over 400 cartridges. I know how much I paid for them and can't depart with them. I tried to say that. Um, you can... I gave my old cricket and all the cartridges to my granddaughter. See, and that's a good idea. Like I said, when you pass it to somebody you know um, and love, it works. And Andrea T says, just admit we're craft hoarders. And we are. Um, that's why I said from, you know, that's, I freely admit that. I'm not as bad as I could be, but hey, Sharon Bone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, Sheila Cushenberry says, don't feel bad. I'm still in shorts and tanks too. Chat, trying to Um. I can relate. I bought the Maker 3 when it came out, yet still I use my Explorer 2. I haven't used the Maker 3 and bought the 24-inch Cameo. So, the Maker 3, Maker 3. No, I have the regular Maker. Prince is the regular Maker. So, I've been using Prince for rhinestone templates. I've been using um, Picasso for my um, labels. And that's it. I just, I don't really cut out much else. So when I'm doing projects, generally I use prints. So that's why I was like, you know, because, and then the last time I tried to do rhinestones, it did not cut properly. So I need to figure that out as well and try and figure out why it wasn't cutting like it was supposed to. And um, I just put a new blade in it. So maybe that would help, but I'm not sure. Um, but used to be, I would use my air two for rhinestone templates and i just don't really use the one much anymore i hope it can't hear me right now it's unplugged so it shouldn't hear me um i'm still in the market for a cutter because cameo 4 is not working what so i'm looking for another one after i finish paying this one what do you mean it's not working what's the matter with it kevin what is it doing Kirsten says you can adjust the size down to the size of your print media. If you're not printing 24 inches, you don't have to print cut 24 inches. I bought my daughter a new Cricut Air 2 for Christmas, so she'll quit following mine. Hilarious. Kind of how I did the, the thing, except he knows it's coming. It was funny because he was like, okay, you're going to have to give me one. Already done, sir. Already done. You didn't even have to tell me. I need to teach myself how to cut applique with my scanning cut. So much to do in no time. Well, I mean, I know applique will cut with all of them. All of the things cut with fabric. I mean, all of the thingies cut fabric. Because my Air 2 cut fabric, too. So, um, see if your other machine will cut fabric. And you'll have to do the um, scanning cut. Um, I have the brother scanning cut more for fabric cutting. So, maybe it does cut better with fabric. I don't know. I have a brand new Eclipse 2 by Sizzix. All I did was take it out of the box. Is that the one that uses cartridges? Kevin, I use my Cameo for mainly to cut rhinestone flop. The I'd sell it if you want to buy and transfer the software. If not, I have no idea what I would do it, with it except keep it for backup. Hey, River City Creative, welcome. It'll have to be after I pay this one off, which isn't soon. Oh no. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out why it's not working right, sir. What what is it not doing? And then, okay, let's have a conversation. Because if you paying for something and it ain't working, we need to know who you paying because we need to talk to them and find out what we can do because paying, although I understand we can be in the same boat with vehicles, you be making a car payment and the car don't work no more, which is why I still drive my beater because there ain't no car payments on that joker. Um, but you have a craft machine. So 
wherever it came from, whence ever it came, sir, they need to be trying to help you figure out how to fix it or how to replace it. And that's on Mary Had a Little Lamb. It does not cut at all. I've had support from where I purchased it. I troubleshooted everything and it just does not cut. Where are you, Kevin? What what area of the U.S. are you in state-wise? That's what I want to know. Because, shoot, we might need to um come by and grab that thing and see what's wrong with it. Because if they troubleshooting it where you bought it from and it still ain't cutting, excuse me, this still ain't working. The Eclipse 2 is no cartridge because it's like the silhouette and cameo and does precision cutting. It just never got good advertising. Oh, okay. I've never heard of it. So, which, like you said, it didn't get good advertising. Is it uh, newish or has it been out for a while? Because, you know, HDB Runt has a cutter now um, that's similar to Cricut, I think. And then um, there's another company out that's got a cutting machine now. Because it's like, cutting machines at the yin yang out here now but it's hard to find one bigger than 12 inches less than two months sir oh no we need to find out uh no fam where you at we need to get that thing fixed look that trade it out replace something who i need to call where'd you get it from email me I'll call them. Look, I got this machine. It ain't working. I'm using my eye massager. And y'all still got me twisted. Somebody need to fix something. Let me know who I need to call. Because I'll piss a fit in a hot minute. If something ain't working. Whole fit. Mr. McCrackens can't stand it. No, it's kind of old. Oh, Sizzix. Just continued it. It runs on eCal, like shortcuts a lot. Oh, cool. Okay. There might be a market for it on eBay too. It's been it's been almost a week. Oh, I'm waiting for a response from my last. Oh, got you, got you, got you, got you. Giardo Creations. I mean, he can speak with the professor, but if he's talked to the people he bought it from and it's not working then now i will say this kevin moore i will say this when i first got picasso i had bluetooth connection issues like it just would not connect bluetooth at all and i thought it was broken so i didn't use it for a while updated the firmware and all of a sudden voila it connects and it works just fine so there's a number of things that could be causing the problem for it. I don't know what all is wrong with it. And it'll be forever for me to sit here and try and troubleshoot through a written chat. Like if you were up here on the show with me and your camera was on it and we were seeing what you was doing, it might go faster. But, um, you know... It it, uh, it depends because if you've connected it Bluetooth and it's connected, you got the blade in like it's supposed to and it's still not cutting, that could just be an issue with the machine. It could be, you know, um, <laughs> what is the word I'm trying to say? It could be a technical issue where they need to fix it. Ain't no amount of talking to nobody going to fix something if it's legitimately broken and not working. So, and things happen. You know, there's like, for instance, my Air 2, since I bought it, I've never been able to print and cut. The print and cut feature on that Air 2 is broken. It does not work. I called. Unfortunately, I never tried the print and cut feature because I didn't know how it worked. So when I finally tried it a year later and found out it did not work because I couldn't get it to work the first time I tried it. So I thought I was doing something wrong. So I stopped fooling with it. I never tried it again. A year later, I tried it. And I called and they went through the troubleshooting steps with me. And then finally Cricket was like, well, I mean, cause she did it right there with me on the phone. And she was like, well, I'm sorry to tell you it's, it's broken and there's, you know, nothing you can do about it. And I'm like, okay, but it's new. I never used that feature and it was, it's been broken since day one. She was like, but it's out of warranty. So it's nothing we can do. So, 
you know, now would be the time to try to get whatever figured out with it, head not calibrated correctly. So, yeah, it could be a number of things that could be wrong. It was a $300 machine, got on savvy discount. I don't want to part with it. Yeah. I seen videos, pictures. I've been on the phone with someone and it's just the same. Yeah, my print and cut doesn't work either. Precious Pieces says, yeah. So sometimes you can get machines that just aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, and just ain't nothing you could do about it. But you've only had that two months. That's a little bit different of a story. There should still be some form of warranty on that thing that will enable you to get it rectified. Um, I just don't know where you got it from. So that's where the issue is going to be um, in trying to get technical support with it, with whomever you got it from. So they should do better. But I also understand because not everybody's technical support is the same. So it is what it is. But at any rate, I'm talking y'all's ear off, doing nothing. It's been a whole hour of no kind of progress at all other than showing y'all my super cool eye massager. And for those who didn't see it before, this is my super cool eye massager that you need in your life that I did not know existed. I absolutely love this thing. So, Kevin, you know, get you heat transfer warehouse. They, they, what? Call Brooke and talk to Brooke and ask her who you can talk to so they can help you get it figured out because you make payments on it. It's only been two months and you ain't been able to use it. Call Brooke, B R O O K E, B R O O K E. Talk to Brooke and tell her I told you to call and talk to her and find out. Hey, I talked to Eve. I was telling her about the problem with my machine and she said to give you a call and find out who can I talk to to get technical support because my cameo is not working. Uh, yeah, Rosalind, check it before the warranty expires. That's why I'm looking for something other than Cricut because I want bigger print and cut capabilities. Yeah, Cricut is limited. Um, but technically, can, uh, Picasso is limited too. So whenever I do eight and a half by 11, which is what I normally print and cut, it's got, it has to have room for the little sensor thingies. You know what I'm saying? So the little sensor thingies have to print and they have to have room to print on that piece of paper. Now you can move them out. You can adjust them, but the more you mess with the adjustment of those sensor lines, the less likely the machine will pick up where those sensor registration marks are and it won't register. So that's why for me, I just left them alone because I ain't want that smoke and I needed my stuff to work. And so I haven't ever messed with my registration, but it would be nice to be able to print a full page of labels instead of only having to do so many and then only some down at the bottom. What type of microphone thingy is that clip to you? This is a, whoop. oh, you must be, um, you might be behind in the chat. This is a Rode mic. It's a, it's the microphone. And um, it's a square as opposed to like a lapel, but you can plug a lapel in here and use it, like put this down somewhere because it's so big. You can put it down somewhere else and just run where just clip the little lapel, but I don't mind the big thing. I've gotten used to it because the clarity of the sound of this thing is awesome. So this is the Rode R R O D E microphone system that's why i want romeo good night sharon davenport have a good night my dear that's why i want romeo can print and cut 24 inches wide to as long as you want but that's the thing that's why i'm asking um sheila is because seem like registration marks have to be somewhere on i guess you know because every other thing i've used needs registration even cricket uses registration marks so that being the case, I, it would be nice to have something that can scan and cut like brother can. Now, brother, you don't have to have the registration marks, if I'm understanding correctly. You can just scan the sheet and then put your cut lines wherever they are. So, 
but I've gotten rid of my brother. So I'm stuck with <laughs> the silhouette. I don't know. That's a that's a test. I'll have to see how that goes. Or like he uh like was mentioned by ah, gosh. I'm sorry, whomever you are. Let me get back up to you. Giardo Creations. Um, like Giardo said, somebody like the professor, uh, Shakia already has experience with uh, tons of experience. She teaches the silhouette. So she would know about the print cut capabilities for a bigger size cameo. Whereas I don't know that because I only I've only had the 12 inch. So is Brooke at the customer service line number or does she have a special line? Um, she has a special line. Matter of fact, let me email her. Uh, do I have your I have your email address? You've emailed me before. I'll email her and ask her who you can talk to. I'll do that now because um, that's bothering my soul because I I've met all the folks up there and everybody's super nice. So for the support to not really been what I I personally would think it would be um, is a little disturbing. I just got to figure out where you and, and it could just be a communication issue, uh, which happens. But the Romeo cutter is housed inside the case. So we actually get the tw full 24 inches in. OK, so this is this. OK, other colors. It's not that. The the problem, if you don't have a printer to print 24, then you can't print and cut. 20, right. Well, hold on. Hold on. Let me let me let me show. Let me you know what? Let me do this. Let me do this. Yeah, that's you. Okay. I got you. I got your email. I got it pulled up. Pray to God I don't forget. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm going to open up something. What are we going to open up? We're going to open up um, Silhouette. And I'm going to show you what I'm saying. Hello. May I ask, will the Brother P800 be a good beginner? Yes, it will be a very good beginner embroidery machine. Yes. It's a great size. It's a great machine. It usually runs perfectly. We usually don't have issues with the embroidery machine. Okay. So, like for instance, one of the... Um, Let's save. I mean, not save. Share screen. Okay. So one of the things that I do here in-house to help us save money for the buy-ins, right, is I print our labels for our um, rhinestones, okay? So all of my labels I print and cut myself, and it takes forever, but it is what it is. So this is what I'm saying when I'm talking about the registration marks and the page and blah, blah. So this is a regular sheet of paper. And this is a 12-inch mat. So technically, I should be able to print and cut up to 12 by 12 inches with silhouette, which is awesome. But my sheet of paper is 8.5 by 11. So in order for the print and cut to even work, even with Cricut, it's the same principle with Cricut. It has to print registration marks. And see these registration marks right here? This square, that line, and that line in the back corner. Now, I'm going into detail for the folks that don't know. So for the y'all that do know registration marks and all that stuff, I didn't know this when I first started cutting. So that's the only reason I'm going into this detail, so that people will understand. So the registration marks have to print on whatever you're doing print and cut on so that when you put this whole mat in the machine, it will read these marks and know exactly where to cut these squares. Otherwise, the cutting machine doesn't know where exactly to cut these squares because I can put this sheet of paper on the mat just a smidge off, just a little bit too far down and not put it all the way up like it's supposed to be, but it will look for these marks. And when it finds those marks, it knows where to cut, even though I didn't put the piece of paper in the exact precise same spot as I did the last time. You see what I'm saying? So that's, for those who don't know, that's what the print and cut feature is. It's so that you can print out stuff on a piece of paper or on sticker paper or whatever, 
And then you can put the boundaries for where you want things to cut and tell it to cut. And it will look for these registration marks and then it will cut precisely where you need things to be cut and get your labels or your picture or whatever it is that you're cutting out to cut out exactly. Okay, so my question is, for someone who has a 24 inch or 16 inch, this part won't change. Doesn't matter the size of your cutter because your piece of paper still has to print these registration marks. You see what I'm saying? So even if I got a bigger cutter, which I'm answering my own question, I think, but I don't know because I don't have one, is it still gonna have to cut print these registration marks? And when it does, it's still gonna make me cut. See, I can't cut an extra label right here because this X out box right here is the area where they're telling you don't put anything that needs to be cut. You see what I'm saying? Thank you, Kevin, for the super chat. We uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Holler. We ap <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. We appreciate that super chat. Um, the Romeo also has a camera, so may not need registration. That's what I'm asking. What type of material? I'm using um, frosted sticker paper. It's frosted label, label paper, sticker paper. You same, same stuff. It's frosted. Um, so that's the problem. Now I know scanning cut, it uses a camera to scan your stuff. You matter of fact, you only I don't even need a computer for the brother scanning cut. I can just put a whole sheet of stickers, labels on a whole sheet, stick it in that brother scanning cut, and it'll put squares where I need it to without even using a computer. That's the cool thing about brother scanning cut. But the cameo, I need registration marks. The cricket, I need registration marks. And that's what takes the space away and why people complain that they can't get a full print and cut out of anything because whatever size it is that you print, like uh, if I had 13 by 19 printer or regular printer where I could do my labels, which I use a laser printer. So I, I don't have a 13 by 19 laser printer. But if I did, I could print and cut 13 by 19. But I only have eight and a half by 11. Uh, Dimps, I get it from uh, Avery. Let me get it from Avery. So yeah, this is this is what my dilemma is because all of this wasted space for stickers is gone. I can't use it. Now again, the camera is for placement, not for scanning cut. Okay. So I found this on one description, built-in registration camera so you can print and cut with precision and accuracy. So registration camera, meaning it needs to find registration marks. And now, again, the one good thing about Silhouette that I am aware of is I can go into right here in page setup, which is over here in the top right-hand corner, this first uh, uh tool bar button up here, piece of paper. You go into page setup and then it's usually right here on the first page design area setup, but this, then the grid mat is right there. Then the last one is for print and cut. So if you click on the registration marks for print and cut, you can change the length of them. You can change the thickness of them. You can change how far in the piece of paper they are. Uh, matter of fact, let's do this. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's control C. And we're going to do another one. And we'll do control V. Did that work? It might not have worked. Yeah, it worked. Okay. Let's go back. Hello. I know it's not responding. Okay, that's why, because it did more than one, which sucks. Oh, shoot, delete. Okay, so I'm going to do media size. We're going to do letter. 
All right. And so it's already on the piece of paper. So technically, this is a blank sheet of paper that goes on the um, silhouette mat. Now, if I were to put this in the silhouette just like this for scan and cut, it's not going to work because it doesn't have registration marks. So I need to put the registration marks on. So if you go to the last tab of the page setup and you put on for registration marks, it has registration marks there. All right. Now you can move them. So let's say I don't want them as long. I can bring this back and see, see how this angle just got smaller. See, you're shrinking it. See, now it's barely there, but I can also make it bigger. So notice the grids on the sides with the little angle brackets is getting smaller. You see that? So what that does is by making it smaller, it gives me more room to be able to print more. But the problem is if you don't have the right lighting, if you don't have your settings just so, um, and you try to use your uh, silhouette to scan this, it's such a small area now that it may miss it and it may not register. And so if it doesn't register, it's not going to cut. So messing with these you know, it's built into it. Some people probably can. I'm scared to try it. I'm not scared to try it, but I, I don't want to waste because label paper is expensive. It's not cheap. So I don't want to waste my label paper trying to get this the cut right. I've wasted enough in the past of label paper. And then also right here, your thickness, like you can make, see how my I made the lines bolder and made them more, more skinny, thick or thin. You can do that. You can change that as well. And then you can also change the inset. See, I can pull it back some or I can bring it in some. So you can change certain settings with the silhouette to make it give you more of a uh, print and cut area. But the problem is the more you mess with these settings, like I can take it all the way to that, which is the widest period that this will let you print and cut, which is almost the full sheet of paper, almost. Um, and it will give me more room for more labels. But if I go to put this on the mat, it may not pick up these registration marks because they're so far apart and small. Your registration marks can be moved on Juliet to fit whatever you're cutting. Yes. Okay. So again, just like the silhouette, Juliet can do it too. But Juliet might be better at picking up the registration marks than silhouette is because it took me a while to get my registration marks where I needed them to be for the silhouette to pick them up. I change mine all the time with no problems with registration. I have more problems with actual placement than the actual reading of the marks. So I don't have issues with the placement. My placement, I can put it almost perfect just about every time. Um, but my problem is getting it to register once I... So at one point in time, I barely could get that thing to register print and cut. But somebody um, taught, I read a, a tip on a website. She was like, um, make sure that you put it, don't put the mat on the line, put it just over the line to the, over the line where the mat is covering the line. Don't put it beside the line, put it covering the line. And that helps. Um, and it was some, some other tip she gave. Um, Oh, she said, put your print and cut paper, whatever paper it is that you're, or whatever you're print and cutting, put it just over the top line on the mat as well. So don't put it inside the grid, put it just over that top line, very, very top line, and it should work. I did that and started putting my mat over the line, and I haven't had registration mark issues since. I've been able to print and cut without any issues whatsoever. So maybe that'll help somebody with placement. I don't know. Um, on my OKI8432, I can print a three sticker paper and then cut it on the Cameo 4 using the 24 by 24 cutting mat. That's cool. That's cool. I think I can do a three on my laser printer too. I'll have to check that out. If you bring the thickness all the way up, it will definitely read it much better. Thank you, Melissa. That's a nice... Uh, point Giardo says, I don't go below 0.65 and I increase the thickness. Lighting has to be right. Um, you don't go past 0.165 for 
which one? You talking about the length or the inset? Or the what thickness you said you turned it all the way up. So which one, length or inset, Giardo, do you not make below 0.65? Um, is five thousand a good price for a two twenty nineteen red line machine that has thirty three one eight six eight stitch count? Um, three hundred thousand stitch, three hundred thousand stitches is not a lot of stitches at all. It is not a lot of stitches. So, um, I'm gonna say, it, are you getting it from a retail location are you purchasing used from off of like offer up or something um because that's where you want to be sure the price is one thing but if the machine ain't working i don't care it could be two hundred dollars and if the machine ain't working and you got to pay to get something fixed on it then it's not even worth the two hundred dollars so a lot of that the logo zone is going to depend on where you're getting it from and what condition it's in the stitch count really don't tell you the condition because it, it could have millions of stitches on it and it still be in excellent running condition because somebody took good care of it because those industrial machines are made to run for a long time they're not made to break down super easy so three hundred thousand stitches is nothing on an embroidery machine especially a multi-needle embroidery machine um, Demp says, I didn't know you could change the registration marks. Yes, fam. Yes, you actually can. The Romeo is actually a full 24 inch. So even with registration marks, you would still have way more area. The print cut. Right. No, no, no. I get that part. I get that part. Thank you. You said you use a laser printer. So that means the sticker paper is laser also, or can you use it in inkjet? No, my laser, my, my paper is laser paper, laser sticker paper. Demps, it is laser sticker paper. Um, I, I get that it, that you get more area to print and cut. My concern more so is the eight and a half by 11 sheet, because that's the only size sheet right now that I use. Can I get more like how I just move the registration marks? I need to make sure that even with me moving registration marks, I can get more space out of my sticker paper because we go through labels and every time I use up, you know, when I get halfway down, it's time to come in and print more and it takes time to come in here and sit and print. So to be quite frank, what I really, really, really wanted was sticker paper that was already cut and all I had to do was print the stickers that I wanted, the labels on the label sheet that was already made, but nobody thus far makes the quality in frosted in square cut in the size labels I need. So I have to do it myself. Have to do it myself. Have to do it myself. Most of these. Oh, inset. Hold on. Sorry, Giardo. Oh, for the inset. Oh, you don't go past six point. Okay. 6.5. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, you don't go past that? Wow. See, so I was trying to go even further, like all the way back. So, yeah, I'm going to practice with it at some point. Find like some paper, scrap paper or something and give it a shot and see. Um, because I would really like to get more labels out of my paper. Um, because as I mentioned, that the label paper that I purchase is not inexpensive. So I need as much real estate off of this as I can get. But at the same time, I also need to make sure that every time I put that sheet in Picasso, it's going to catch those registration marks and print. And Because I don't have time for it to be looking for the registration marks and not finding it. That's a pain. I remember that struggle. And I don't need that anymore either. So, you know, it is what it is. So I've been watching a lady that has the Romeo. I can message her and ask, yeah. Have you tried online labels? Yes, I have. I don't like their stickers. I sure have. Matter of fact, um, matter of fact, I have purple labels from them, purple label paper um, that I was going to use. I ended up not using, even though I'm thinking about bringing it back. I'm glad you mentioned that. But there, for whatever reason, that the purple... It, the the sticker 
part is not good. So like it peels off. I don't like that. Um, it won't stay stuck. But um, I bought their squares that are already cut and the labels were just not a good quality. It just, it just wasn't. Um, and I ended up giving the whole dang box to Goodwill because it just, it heated me so bad. I was so upset about it. Um, yes, I practice with different setting. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I guess, I guess it kind of depends on whether or not you hold your mouth right. <laughs> I guess. So, I mean, because my thing is you give me the option to move it. So, why is it not reading it with it? You know, you let me go out that far. So, it seemed like it would let you do it, you know. So, for it to not let you do it kind of sucks a little bit. Um, Kirsten, I use off-brand mats for all my cutting machines. The Cameo came with a 24 by 24 mat, but I found I can order off-brand of that size. Oh, that's cool to know. Um, used from the marketplace. Okay, so logo zone, I would definitely have them stitch out some stuff with all 15 needles. Like there's an H test that they should be very familiar with with that machine. Have them stitch out that H test like right there and let you see it or something. It doesn't take long to stitch it out at all. So ask them if they'll stitch the H test. And if it stitches nice and clean, then you should be good. But all 15 of those needles need to work for that price. Period. Um, so let's see. Do you use the Oracle frosted sticker paper? Hold on, y'all. Oracle frosted. No, I don't. I'll look into them, though. Are they? Where, where are they? Have a good time. Find your love. My love is sexfine.xyz. He's back there in the room. I don't need to find him. So appreciate it, fam. But you can you can move on with that trash. Because I already, I already got him. He back yonder. Having his me time. So you don't, you don't need to. You don't need to be in here. Thank you, Dimps. Appreciate it. I was coming in here to get rid of that fool. <laughs> Um, you can get it on Amazon. Okay, let me look and see if or or Oracle. Let me see if I use them. Oh my gosh, I got all kind of stuff up that don't need to be up. I didn't know I was still sharing the screen, y'all. Okay, hold on. Um, Oracle, Amazon, O R A C. Because I did buy somebody's frosted sticker paper on Amazon. No, it starts with an M. It starts with an M. Hold on. It's uh where is that? Um dang it. I'm, y'all, I got stuff everywhere. I got a um oh it's over on the other side of my um rolly cart. It starts with an M. I know who I bought. Matter of fact, I just took this down, y'all. This is crazy. Sticker paper. I C K E R. Hmm. There's that migraine thing I was looking again. Um. And I wanted it matte. It has to be well. Actually, frosted matte is frosted in a way. It's it's not. Uh, so that's what I was using. Um, at one point, it's matte sticker paper, not frosted. I said that wrong. Um, but at any rate, um, oh shoot, HTV right got sticker paper, y'all. Check that out. Go ahead on them. Uh, online labels. Isn't that who you said? Uh, I think that's who you just said. Where are you? Can't find you, Roger. Pretty sure that's who you said. Uh, Yeah, online labels. Yep, I thought that's who you said. Yeah, I used online labels before. I didn't like their stuff. You in the bed, good. Get you some rest, my dear. Um, 
See the video is Swift Creek Customs basic print and cut with Caesar Juliet should be the same with Romeo. She has both. Okay, cool. I'll check it out, my dear. Um, let's see. Let's see. It's blind man. Um, I went through. Who did I get? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because I need to be able to see what the heck I'm doing. I went to. Oh my cuss that is not what i meant to click on sticker yes i see k r it starts with an m who was it i did koala at one point so koala was the uh clear that i used to use because i love their like their sticker stick like nobody's business i didn't have to worry about them coming off but they were clear and people couldn't read the stickers when I was putting them on the ice boxes. So I had to find something else. Um, so I stopped using Koala and started using whoever this is. Matt is match, match, what match? I love their sticker paper, but it was the, the sticker is not on here. Let me put labels. Maybe that's where it's gonna come up. Label. Um, the page was split in half. So it wasn't conducive because I keep my labels in a binder. And um, here it is, Mako. This is who I was using at one point. Here it is, y'all. Sorry. I used them. Now, I did like theirs, even though that says clear. Mine weren't clear. Mine was, um, hell yeah, it's clear, but it's called matte. So I was using them at one point. But for whatever reason, their sheet when you put it it says full sheet and it is but the part on the back the the back part of the sticker is split down the middle so when i use my labels i like to pull the outside i like to weed it in other words weed everything on the outside and leave the inside square so that when we're doing boxes all i gotta do is you know slide my nail under peel off a sticker and stick it to the box but you can't do that when the rest of the outside border and stuff is in the way so the this sheet, this label was a good label, but because it was split in half, it wasn't helpful to us. And, and this was more expensive than um, Avery, not Avery, or is it Avery? It is Avery. They're more expensive than Avery for their papers. So it was just like, bro, I can't, I can't do it. So anyways, I need a set size, a set square. And so it was just like, screw it. I'm going to make it myself. And that's what I did. And that's what we've been doing. And it's been working. It's a lot of work, but we it's been working. Nia told labels. Um, I'll check them out. Me color. Um, you can move marks up and down to how big you need, but there is a border margin. So it doesn't look like you can use the entire page. That's what I'm saying. So there's not a way. The only way to be able to use the whole sheet without any issues is brother scan and cut. Pretty much that's it. Sticker paper, Maritus. I'm going to check all these folks out. Hold on. Hopefully all of these on Amazon, y'all, because I'd have to look it up otherwise. But at any rate, so that's where I am. Oh, my God, y'all, it's almost midnight. And I've been on here almost three. It have been three hours. Um, But, yeah, so, y'all, that's what I've been doing. M-A-U-R-I-T-U-S. No, M-A-U-R-I-T-I-U-S. Label. Mm, I don't see them. So I have to Google them because I don't see it. Search Google. Let's see it on Etsy. Oh, Mar Mar Marietation? Oh, sticker paper supplier, the manufacturer. 
Uh, I'll check them out. Is that the right website? That's not the right website. Who is that? Software program do I need for my new PE 770? I would suggest a what pro. Um, congratulations, by the way, Susan Green. We ring the bell for babies. It's, for me, I like to ring the bell when we got a full house that's on Sunday evenings. So if you have time in your schedule, please stop in briefly on Sunday evening so we can ring the bell for you and others can ring the bell for you too. Hi, Linda Ivy. How are you doing? Um, what is a good program for sublimation? Ooh, oh, uh, Granny Hamilton sublimation. <sighs> to be honest, I use... Microsoft Publisher a lot. I use Photoshop a lot. Um, a lot of people use Cricut. Um, there's a lot of stuff. Hey, Jenny McKinney, how are you? I meant to send you your... I, I need to mail you something. Um, I've never tried the sticker paper. Just looking at sticker paper, starting with M. Huh, hilarious. Oh, 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 my bad. <laughs> He was trying to find the one I was, yeah, no, the one is is Marco, whatever it was. I had it pulled up. That was the one I, but I don't use it no more. It's Avery. It's just, I just use Avery. Uh, and I use the whole plain, it's just the whole plain sheet. And I cut my own stickers because I cannot find sticker paper with the right dimensions in a square that's matte that's a matte sticker paper i can't find it I just haven't been able to find it i'm super late but spent time with hubby hey socializing craft spending time with hubby is good i know mine probably texted me let me see if that was him texting me fussing because i ain't back there yet no it was not him. I'm surprised because he'll text me in a high minute. Where you spend time with my mama? I mean, with my woman. <sighs> okay, sir. I'm coming. But we spent the day together hanging out and stuff, so he's probably all right. Um, but so at Pro, if you go to, thank you, um, Sheila Cushenberry, and here we go, Dimps. If you, Susan Green, go to my website, thebabiesbooty.com. Not dot store dot com. If you go to the baby's booty dot com, there is a link for there's a, a link in the menu at the top for so what pro. There's a free trial there. You can give it a shot for 30 days and see if you like it. And I do have a tutorial here on YouTube that teaches you how to use the trial, but it's an older version of the of the same software. They've updated some things since then, but it gives you some basics on how to use the program. Then um if you like it, it's $65, whereas most other embroidery programs are way more than that. So, um, yeah, definitely give that a look-see. Neato labels. I've seen Neato, and I need to check out Neato. Um, but, yeah, I, I would prefer to have the labels already cut, and all I got to do is print them. Um, you know how... You can buy Avery labels that are already cut and you just put put them in a printer and print them based on the template that they give you. Yeah, fam. That, that's something I would love to learn how to do. Cut my own templates and then print them. But I don't know that I can do that or not. So anyways. Um, make them with Marilyn. I need, did, Marilyn, did you ever get an embroidery editing program? Chris Smith said, give him the eye mask. Girl, don't, don't, he, you know, he'll take it. You know, he'll take it. You can do it. I, I've been sitting, I've, I've tried to figure out how I possibly could. Um, I just wish I could find it. Because, for instance, not yet. Okay, I need to get you hooked in with Solar Pro. But the, when I ordered the, labels from Avery they were frosted they were matte not frosted they were matte um and they had the squares pre-cut but the squares were um 
rounded corners. That's not what I want. I want squared corners. And I guess it's hard for folks to make squared corner labels pre-cut, I guess. I don't know, y'all. I just, uh, it's like, it's so hard sometimes when you have a vision of something that you want and you can't find it. It's really hard. So that's where our creativity come in. We just make what it is that we want. And so far, I've been doing decent making the labels and not uh, wasting too much time doing labels, but it just would be so much easier if I could just put the label paper in the printer, press print, and then print all the different ones that I need. But Chris Smith says, Sew It Pro is the bomb. I love Sew It Pro. Sew It Pro is amazing. We're going to use Sew It Pro um, tomorrow on our live stream unless something changes and I have to do something different. So, yeah, because we got a lot going on right now. What was the name of the embroidery program again? It's not for digitizing, Niki, Nichi, Nisi, Nisi. It's not for digitizing. I'll show you the program. Hold on. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go here. And you can go to yourbabiesbooty.com. It pulls on my website. And right here, see at the top, it says Sew What Pro. Then they also have Sew Art. They have Sew Icons. They have Sew Cat, Sew Clean, Sew Right. And here are frequently asked questions for Sew What Pro. So if you click on Sew What Pro, here is where you would, if you have a Windows computer, you would download um, Windows 64, usually is W64. Um, and if you have a Windows computer and try to use Microsoft Edge to download it with, I use Chrome and didn't have any issues, but some people have issues downloading the program from, um, Chrome. But at any rate, if you click download, it will, um, actually, as you see down here, download the actual program. That is the full version, but it's restricted for 30 days, 15 days, 30 days. I forget what it is. So you only have a certain amount of days to use the program. At the end, it's going to tell you either buy the program or that's the end of your license. You can't do nothing anymore. So when it's time for you to buy the program, you would just come right here, buy the program. And then even though I'm probably going to change it, but what happens is when you get your, when you purchase it, Usually it's through PayPal. I get an email. Whenever I get that email, if I'm awake <laughs> or not driving, if I'm paying attention to my phone and I see that I have an email because I get my email alerts and I try to stay on top of them. As soon as I see that email, I'll generate, I have to go onto their website, generate the code and it automatically emails to you. So you will get an email registration code and you will copy and paste that registration code into the license area of the program and unlock the program. So it's not as, you know, it's not a big deal to, you know, get it, but you don't have to install anything else. That is the full version once you download the, the demo. It's the full version, but you have to unlock the full version with the code whenever you make the purchase. Or you could just purchase it right off and you'll get the code and unlock it and just use it. But So It Pro is an excellent program, especially for such an affordable price. I'm surprised he ain't went up on that price yet. Um, but no, it does not do digitizing. But they have So Art, which is right here. And So Art is a digitizing program. So Art um, is an auto digitizer. So if you want to watch tutorials on so art i would suggest clever dog designs she has excellent tutorials on how to digitize with so art i don't use it for digitizing um because it is an automatic digitizer i don't care for the way auto digitizing usually works so i don't recommend it for that but if that's what you can afford it's 75 bucks whereas most digitizing programs are Five hundred, six hundred, a thousand dollars. So I would 
you know, if that's all you can swing at 75, I would say get so art if you just absolutely have to digitize something. And it does work. You can digitize with it. It just doesn't always turn out with the best results. Then they have so icons. And so icons is a program that when you um, go into your folder on your computer with your embroidery designs in it, so icons will let those files show up as a preview, a little teeny thumbnail preview of the embroidery design instead of it coming in as a, just a blank file folder looking piece of paper icon. So if you want to see what a preview of that look like, a thumbnail, that's what so icons does. Um, and then there's so cat. So cat is a program where it helps you keep all of your embroidery designs cataloged. Um, and it's a cataloger basically. Um, and then so clean cleans up your computer of files, duplicate files or something like that. And then so right is a, um, program that helps you with using built-in fonts on your computer. And it also comes with fonts, it digitized already, uh, embroidery fonts, and you can type out, you know, what you want for it to do whatever I think. Um, but either way, it's got the fonts already in there. You can use those pre-fonts to put words together to put on your Sew It Pro to add to your embroidery designs. So that's what the different programs are in the Sew What series. Uh, but Sew What Pro, honestly, off gate, off top, is everybody that has embroidery can benefit from Sew It Pro if you want to edit embroidery designs. So for instance, um, the program, I mean, the project for tomorrow, it's, uh, like for instance, if you had a, a, an embroidery design of a heart and you wanted your name inside the heart, but you can buy the embroidery design by itself with just the blank heart without your name in it. But if you want to put your name in it, then you would use so what pro to put your name in it and then you can stitch it out type situation. Or if you want to, um, if you want to take a part of an embroidery design away, you don't want to stitch that. You want to delete it. You can use Sew It Pro to do that. I mean, this is, this is a bunch of different things you can do with Sew It Pro, and I absolutely love it. Um, I saw something. Avery printable blank square labels, two by two, glossy, crystal clear. I can't use those River City Creative because they're clear. I need um, matte or frosted. Because the clear, they can't read it on the ice box. The Sew Pro have fonts in it. It does have a couple of them. Um, but usually I buy fonts separately. I usually buy my fonts separately. So I import my fonts. Um, but you can... So I love Sew Pro. You can import fonts and use them in the program to, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. And I think it's a little bit too late for me to try to explain it, but I do have tutorials out there. So there's two ways to use fonts in So It Pro. One way is to import the fonts and place letter by letter, hand not hand place, but you gotta place each letter. Then there's another way to import fonts where once you program the fonts in, you can just type out what you want. Um, and I'm pretty sure I have a tutorial on how to do that too. Um, Creative Fabrica has so many embroidery fonts. If they do, then yes, you can get those, download them and import them into Sew It Pro. And I can show you how to, or I have a, let me look and see, because I had so many videos and it's been so long since I need to do an updated video on it honestly because it's been a while since I've done a Sew It Pro video um, and I used to have quite a few of them but um, let's see playlist I got a Sew It Pro playlist if I'm not mistaken Sew It Pro tutorials yep so um, oh that I got a class on Sew It Pro How to do reposition of hoops, cutting embroidery designs, splitting embroidery designs, 
um, difference between Soul Pro and Soul Art, um, how to line up embroidery designs, how to reorder the thread stops. Uh, I need to do some updated. God, I need to do updated. These are old. Adding letters to a design. Yeah, I need to do an updated thingy. I really do. But that being said, I'll have to update you. Tons of very informative. Thank you, um, Chris Smith, but I need to the, the update them. Hey, Debbie D. Thank you, Chris Smith. I'm, I appreciate you saying that. Um, uh, Marilyn, I need to get Erica. Here's the video. Oh, girl, don't play me. I don't even know what video it is. Hold on. Because I can't see. Stupid. Uh, Well, I don't want to call StreamYard stupid, but I can't click the links in StreamYard. It's just not fair. Here you go. So it broke Oh, get out! Go, dance. Go. Go. Go, Jody. Okay. So yeah, you can, um, but that was five years ago. There's another way to do it. That's the basic way, but there's another way to do it where you can um, map your fonts. And I, you know what? I think the video is not a video. It was a part of my class. It I went, When I did the, the class on Sewer Pro, I showed how to map fonts so that you can type them. Miss Barb, I need to get some sleep too. I'm about to leave so I can go in there, lay down with my new eye massager. And use it while I might let him use it first. And then I use it after he goes to sleep. But I might go on and use it first. And he just got to wait his turn. So I'm going to go back there with my eye massager. But I got to do this email first for Kevin. And then I'll um, work on that. And it was something else I was going to say to y'all. Oh, Marilyn. Marilyn. What is your email address, Marilyn? So anyways, y'all, I've, I've been sitting too long. I found my algae acting up oh, on my butt. Let's see. And back. That's Kevin. I don't want to. Let me do his first, actually. Let me do that. So y'all, I appreciate y'all. Y'all are awesome sauce. It was a lot of fun. And... You guys rock. Period. Oh, what's this woman's name? I said Brooke. There she is. And customer takes support. If I could remember the other lady's name, I would send it to her instead of Brooke, but I'm hoping Brooke can get, she, she's usually good at getting back to me. So hopefully, Kevin, that'll help get you some support for your machine and you can um, get that thing working because you, you don't had it two months. It should be working and that's on period. So, um... What I wanted. This is what I wanted. What's this woman's name? Her name is Marilyn. Hey. 
that's what I meant to say. As soon as I get this worked out, then I'll do this and then um, we'll do off topic questions. Does your manufacturer offer a brown, darker than smoke topaz? Not that I've seen. Not that I've seen. I'll check again. Um, but not a brown darker than smoke topaz because the only thing I have is smoke topaz because coffee is technically lighter than smoke topaz. Um, I'll check, but as far as I know, it's just um, smoke topaz. Which, by the way, with um, what's the name? Black Black History Month in February. Uh, Smoke topaz works perfectly. Coffee works perfectly. Um, light topaz works perfectly. But the McQuackens is real good at his colors. Let me see what's her email. Uh, I don't want to do that. Okay, thank you, stupid thing. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. There's her email right here. Fam, I y'all, I done let my phone die so many times. I dropped it so many times. There it is. Okay, Marilyn. So when you get an opportunity, um, Marilyn, check your email and uh, let me know. Love the way you engage with your crowd. Keep up the good work. Oh, thank you, Miss Granny Hamilton. I appreciate that. It's hard work sometimes. <laughs> it's very hard because you can't keep everybody happy. And I'm just one person. So usually my honey is on here with me in the background of StreamYard. And he helps me navigate questions and stuff. And I usually have him on in an earpiece. And he, you know, tells me in my ear if I need to talk to somebody or answer a question. Or he'll highlight it on the screen for me or something like that. Um, but even then, sometimes I, I don't get all questions. Don't get to answer everybody. And I feel bad. Um, but at the same time, it's just me. I can't do this so much. So I definitely try. Um, but I love being in front of the crowd. I love being live. I love talking to people and interacting with people. Um, but it's definitely not for everybody. So, um, I do need to get back to doing pre-recorded videos though, because that's what helps your channel grow. Um, it doesn't grow as fast otherwise. So, um, you do have to import each well okay so really quickly and then i'm gonna get up off of here discard all there it is so so it pro is and mine's not updated i don't know why i just refuse to update my so it pro but here's so it pro all right and so if i want to um why did i do that if I want to, let's say, okay, uh, let's see, let's go here, let's go here, let's go down to what the hey, um, I just saw him. Where is he? Colorful heart showers for the heck of it, and we'll go stitched okay so say for instance this is your embroidery design right and let's go to view and we'll go to texture 
so that you can see what it should look like when it stitches out, right? And when you want it to import, um, did you have your coffee? No. I did have soda, though. That's probably why, now that I think about it, Janet, because I've had a migraine all day. Well, no, all afternoon. It wasn't earlier today. It started this afternoon. So I took some medicine and drunk some caffeine to help me with that. But I am definitely getting sleepy. Um, so it's not going to last too much longer. But at any rate, if you wanted to, say, put your name right here in this cloud, this is the type of thing that Sewer Pro is excellent for. Absolutely love Sewer Pro. Um, so first of all, it tells you the size of your design. So over here on the right hand side over here, it tells you, don't worry about stitch distribution. I don't know why that's there. I don't pay that mess no attention whatsoever. But Colorful Heart Shower Showers is the name of the program um, design. And it gives you the name of the design. It gives you the size of the design. It tells you how many total stitches it is in the entire design. 5,753. Okay. So that being the case, it tells you also who authorized it, the copyright if there is one, and the color file, blah, blah, blah. Then you come down here and it tells you each color stop. So the first color stop, it shows you what the first color stop stitches. So color stop number one is going to stitch the cloud and these strings hanging down. Then color stop number two is going to do just this one heart down here. Number three, just that one. Number four, just that one. Number five, just that one. Number six, just that one. Number seven, just that one. And then number eight is going to do the highlight of the bottom of the cloud. Okay. So say for instance, um, in most instances, when you put this embroidery design on a brother embroidery machine, the colors, any embroidery machine, really, the colors don't matter. You're going to stitch out the colors, whatever color you want. So it doesn't matter that this is blue. If you wanted it to be pink, all you got to do is when you go to stitch this first color stop in your embroidery machine, put the pink thread on the embroidery machine. It doesn't have to be pink. But if you just want it to say pink to remind you, you just come on here and you click pink. See right here? Here's your colors. Now, say for instance, this says Brother Polyester Thread. Say for instance, you use Madeira Thread. And these thread numbers don't match your Madeira thread. Well, guess what? You go up here to the thread palette and you come down and you go to Madeira uh, Poly Neon. You click there and there here are all the thread numbers that go with the pink that you're going to use in your embroidery project. So say, for instance, I didn't want 1909. My thread is 1915. I can just select 1915 and that way I know which thread it is that I need to pull out to stitch this out. And then when I go to stitch it for my next customer, hey, this is the thread color that I use, you know? So that's what this is for. Um, you don't absolutely have to do this. It's just there in So What Pro, it makes it awesome. But say, for instance, you want to add a name. Well, in order to add a name to this particular project, you can't put the name first because if you put the name first, then when it stitches this, it's going to stitch over the top of it. So if you want the name to be on the cloud, you need the name to stitch probably after the cloud and before it starts stitching the hearts down here at the bottom. Okay. So let us go ahead and we are going to put a name right here. So if you want to, uh, if you look right up here, there's a, a part in the toolbar that says lettering. This is where you do your, um, adding your letters to so what Pro. You have insert lettering from the info pane. Then this one is insert TTF lettering, which is the lettering that's on your computer. And it will kind of like digitize it for you. This does not work very well. Last time I used it, please don't use that. Please, please, please don't use that. It, it, it's not the best. And then right here, insert pre-digitized lettering from your keyboard. All right. And then this one is uh, Open So Right, which is the other program I was telling you about, um, where it does have lettering and you can use that. Those are already digitized for So What Pro, and you can use those. And then right here is Align Your Text. This is Curve Your Text. And this one is Warp Your Text. Okay. Now I've never used Warp. That's a new thing. Um, curve, last time I checked, didn't work as well as hoped for, but it does work. Uh, but at any rate, the normal way I've taught in the past, which goes with that video, 
is the info icon view. So if you click this first square, it's going to open up the info icon view, right? So right now, this is the last few embroidery folders that I opened up. This is not, actually, I told you wrong. This is not where we want to go. So hold on. Let me click that button again. That's not what we want. We need to go to where our font lives first. So I'm going to go up here to file and I'm going to go to merge. Okay. And I'm going to look for my font folder. Okay. So here is the drive where my fonts are. I'm going to go to embroidery. I know puppy. I know puppy. Give me a minute, puppy. Give me a minute. And then you go down here and I'm going to go to my letters because that's where my fonts live. And I'm going to just open this first font right here. Let's go to Allison. All right. And so here in the Allison folder, yeah, it's after midnight. You're used to going out by now. So here in the Allison folder, here are my fonts. Okay. And they're listed, you know, like medium. Uh, like if I click on that medium DD, that's saying this is the lowercase d, this is medium d means that's the uppercase d the way this particular person did these fonts that's the way they did them so say your name is uh eve all right so i'm gonna grab the first e and then i'm gonna click on open all right so there's my first letter e so i put it right there so now that i've opened the first letter now i want to go to my info icon view and now that that whole folder with all those letters in it will show up right here if all of these letters don't show up like this, there's a box right here that says alphabet mode. You want to make sure that it's clicked because if it's big like this, it's going to take you forever to type out all these letters. You don't want that. So make sure alphabet mode is clicked. Once you have alphabet mode clicked, here's all your letters. So here's E. I want to do the V. So I'm going to look in my list and let me tell you V. Here's the V. Click on V. The V shows up. Hey, hello, V. So I turn it over slide it over to where it needs to be. And then now I go back and look for my E, which is right here. And I click my E and there's my letter E. And so now my name is spelled out on my cloud. Now, if your name is supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, that will take forever to click each one, unless you're good at what you do, which I ended up getting very good and was able to click in each letter. And the other reason why I like doing it this way is because sometimes like, in some instances, like that letter E and this V and this E, right now they're proportionately great, but I didn't want my V and my E to be that big. So I would come down here and I would grab a smaller version of those letters. I think these are smaller. Yep. See how that's much smaller? I can't do that in the other way of doing the lettering. Once you map it to a keyboard, I can't do it this way. So that's one of the reasons, one of the other reasons, see, I love how that looks, whereas the other E, V, E, the V and the E was much bigger. So this allows me to mix and match sizes, but you do have to literally click each letter that you want to add in there. So if your name is Stephanie, then you got to go S, T, E, P, H, A, N. you see what I'm saying? And although that's not tragic, but it allows you to take the time, arrange your letters exactly the way you want your letters to be, you know, and, and again, it, yeah, it takes longer, uh, you know, to do it this way, but it can be done. And, you know, for 65 bucks, you know, as opposed to the other popular program that's out there, which is uh, in Brilliance which you can do a lot of this stuff, all of this stuff within Brilliance too. But I believe that program is like $350 or something like that. It's $350. So it's like you kind of, eh, you know what I'm saying? So with this, it allows you to have a little bit more control over your letters um, and, and how you do them. But you see, just that quick, I typed out Stephanie. It didn't take that long. But some people are like, oh, my God, I want to be able to click it on the keyboard. I want to type the letter out. And if you're doing a whole poem, I get that. I totally get that. 
So what they, the, the creators of this program did, they programmed it in where you can take these fonts and map them to your keyboard. And that's a whole nother tutorial that, you know, will take a lot longer to go into. But just to show you really quickly what you can do, um, you can definitely, you know, work with each one of these. Like, for instance, do this, hold down shift, select each one, um, hold down shift and drag it up to position number two. And now what's going to happen is that's going to stitch. The E is going to stitch. Let's grab this and pull this up. We'll hold down shift, drag it up above the two. Actually, let's drag it down. So there's position number two and then 11. Let's hold it down, drag it up on the two. So now one's going to stitch. That's going to stitch. That's going to stitch. That's going to stitch. Then that's going to stitch. You see what I'm saying? So it puts it all in order so that when you put it on the embroidery machine, It'll stitch like it's supposed to. And by two, three, and four being three separate color stops, it'll stitch two and then it'll stop on the single needle machine. Then it'll stop three. I mean, it'll stitch three and then it'll stop. And then it'll stitch four and then it'll stop. So if you don't want it to keep stopping like that, then what you would do is come up here to edit, edit, join threads. And then you want to join adjacent threads of the same color. And when you click that, now it's going to stop. It'll stitch EVE all at one time. And it, it won't stop until it's time to stitch the red heart so that you can change the color of the thread. Okay. So that's a quick rundown of just one thing that you can do with Sew Up Pro. Um, another thing that I absolutely love about Sew Up Pro is, say, for instance, you don't want hearts down here. Um, or you don't want that heart and you don't want that heart. So you can come up here to the cutting toolbar. And when you click there, look, you got a little pink eraser. So you click the little pink eraser. You can pick the size eraser that you want and just erase. Bloop, 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 bloop. Just like that. And guess what? That whole heart is now gone. Whoops, one more stitch. Bloop. And then close. Do you want to perform the erasures? Yes. And guess what? It's gone. You don't have that heart there to have to stitch anymore. So it's all kinds of cool things you can do um, to make life easier, even though you easily could have just selected that color stop and right clicked on it and hit delete and it would have took it away that way too. But sometimes erasing is the better option. Okay. So that is, hey, 755 and a possible. So yeah, so what pro is really cool. Um, Christmas says each letter of the font needs mapped in. I'd rather just choose exactly like you did. Yes, so um, you can get the part of Embrace that lets you do BX fonts for free. Yes, so yes, there is a way that you can get the Embrilliance part that will let you type out letters, but you have to find fonts that are BX fonts. Um, which means they are made for that program. And then you can use it for free and type out letters and save them and import whatever it is you typed out into So What Pro. Now, before they let you map out fonts, I would do that for where I had to type out a long thing like a poem or something that was going on a blanket. I used to use in Brilliance, the free BX font typer thingy. I used to use it for that. But mapping the fonts really is not hard at all. And I actually enjoy having control over how those fonts are mapped because you can have control over, you know, your fonts. So, um, gosh, I is just unable to read the alphabet file. I didn't ask you to read the alphabet file. Um, I wish I could. So say, for instance, I want to add that font. So let's go to File. Let's go to New. And then I'm going to go back to Aerospace, which is where I was. I'm going to go to Embroidery. Um, I'm sorry, puppy. I'm coming. I'm going to go to Letters. And I can't remember the name of that font. But I'm going to go to Allison. 
So let's click on Allison and click OK. So this is how you map your fonts. All right. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, blah, 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 blah. Here are all the letters to that font, right? So in finding all of the letters and numbers and stuff, this red line is, you remember how you were in grade school and they gave you the, the three lines. It was the solid line, the dotted line for the middle, and then the red line for the bottom which is where you were supposed to place the bottoms of each part of your letters, right? So if you wanted to map this properly, you would um, click on the fonts that you want to move. And so I'm going to click and hold down control, select each one of these, because as you see, they are not lined up with that red line. And then on my arrow keys, I'm just going to push the up arrow. And so now all of those are lined up on the line, right? All right, and so we're going to do the same thing with this letter A. I'm just going to move this up. All right, that letter A looks perfect. Letter B, I'm hold down Control C, D, E, F, and G. I'm going to select those because all of them look like they were about at the same level. So I'm going to move them all up at the same time, save myself some issues. All right, so B is down. C looks perfect, so I'm not going to select that. Hold down control. D is down below. So I'm going to grab that. E looks great. So no need to move that. F, eh, it can move up a little bit. G needs to move down. So I'm not going to select that. So let's move this up. And now the letters are on the line where I want those to be. So now let's grab this G because I think the G needs to move down. And then we're going to move it to where that circle or part is on the line like it's supposed to be okay you see what i'm saying so you just you can move and map all of these at one time you know they make it sound like it's difficult but it gives you control over your letters and how you want your letters to present when you put them in a program to to type so let me pull these up it's m looks great so we're gonna leave m alone n o P, Q, R, and S. All of these need to come up. I'm using my arrow keys to bring those up. N, I brought up too much, so I'm going to drop that down a smidge. That looks fine. That looks fine. P needs to come down. Q needs to come down. R, down a smidge. S looks great, even though it probably could have come down a smidge. T, U, V, W, X, Y. And I'm not going to do too many more of these. I'm just going to move just these. All right. Y. And Y needs to come down. And then T needs to come up. All right. And then Z needs to come up. All right. And so then you got a comma. Comma needs to come down if that's the comma. Pretty sure it is. Exclamation mark needs to come up. Period needs to come down. Question mark needs to come up. Okay. So in this particular folder, this is um, one size. Okay. So this folder is not really a good folder to practice this or to show y'all this on because see, look, we got the exact same letters in a lowercase down here and it's going to confuse the program but I'm just going to delete this here in a minute, but I'm going to show you. Okay, so now that I have all my letters lined up exactly where I want them when I type them on the keyboard, now I need to tell the program what letters this is. So this is a zero. So I'm just going to hit the, the zero on the keyboard and watch what happens. So now that I hit the zero, it automatically figured out this is zero through nine. Okay, so this is the capital letter A. So I'm going to hold down shift, hit capital letter A. It messed up because usually when a um, programmer programs their fonts, they program them all the capital letters first, then the lowercase letters. But that's not how these people did it. So that's why the machine is like, oh, well, that's how that is. So now I got to go back and change that. But it's no big deal. So let's go capital B. But if it was like that, then I would have been done with all my letters because if the if the designer had a designed it that way, then it I would have been done. Uh, a, B, C, D, what? Oh, E, all the I in it messed me up. F, F, G, G, whoops, G, G, H, 
page. Uh, and the cool thing is, after this is done, that's it. You don't have to do this anymore. It's already done. So the next time I go to use this font, because it's one of my favorites that I'm going to use, I'm saying that I ain't use this font in forever. I'm just saying this. If this was one of my favorites, it's already done. I don't have to worry about it anymore. It's already set up. And all I got to do from this point forward is just type it. And I can type it with my keyboard now. Okay. Because I mapped it. This is called mapping. It's called mapping a font. And all it is, is when you're, it's just like you making a map and telling people where to go when they come to your house. Well, this is telling the font where to go, telling the program where to go on the keyboard when you start typing letters on your keyboard. That's all this is. You're mapping where your fonts are. Okay. W, W, X. And my W and my X is too too wide. X, Y, Y, capital Z, lowercase Z. This is comma on my keyboard. This is exclamation mark on my keyboard. This is period on my keyboard, and this is question mark on my keyboard. All right. And so once this is done, then all you have to do is go up here and save. And it's already got the name Allison. So I'm going to put Allison too because I know, no, I'm going to put Allison delete because I don't want to keep this because it's, I, I got to, I got to, I would have to, okay, so that's done now. So now that that's done, all I got to do is close this. And so now when I want to type something, look, this says Allison delete. It's already selected. Right now I only have one program. So I would, let me close this out. So say for instance, let me take my name out. Let's delete. So now I can go to pre-digitized pre lettering. Instead of going info icon view, which is right here, I go to the pre-digitized lettering and it pulls this back up. And see where it says Allison delete. You can pick your font right here. I don't pick my font. And so now I can just type Eve is the crazy one, period. And I'm done. So the only thing is it gives spaces already. You see it's still not super perfect, but at least it's there. And so once this is done and I don't typed it, all I got to do is hit save. And once I hit save, if I'm remembering correctly, I just close this out. Once I close it out, here it is. Here is my, my message that I typed out. And so now all I got to do is now come here and line everything up the way I wanted it. So it's still some work to it. So that's why I'm just like, it's better to use info icon view. But like I said, some people just are so bent on being able to type it out that that's what they prefer to do. But once this is mapped in, I don't have to do this anymore. I can just go back in and type what I wanted to type to begin with. Now, whether or not you can adjust the spaces or not, whether they've improved that part of it or not, I don't know. Because again, I haven't used so a pro um, typing part in a long time because I don't mind clicking my letters in. So that's that. All right. That was a crash course. That is a crash course. Save, change, nope, don't want to save. So hopefully that was part of a so a pro class that I used to teach and um, would charge for. So um, then set up in the bed for this impromptu training. <laughs> yes, honey. So yeah, I hope you guys appreciated that and can use it to benefit you. No, 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 Sheila Kushberry, I'm done with the chef coats. I only had two. I was supposed to be working on hoodies for the restaurant. That's what I was supposed to do. Um, so yeah, that's how you, um, no, 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 Sheila Cushberry, I don't mind. I, I like to, once it's on my mind and going ahead and showing it, I'd rather show it while it's on my mind and then go from there. So I'm going to start with a preview of Cody. Okay. That worked, Granny. <laughs> oh man. I was scrolling through front file and pulling each letter I needed then pull my hair out. Yeah, no, no, no. You just click on each letter. Click, 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 click and get them all in. 
Yep, 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 yep. Y'all have a good night, Janet McKinney, for your baby blanket. Let me know how it turns out. Um, is there a place in Hatch to where you can join the color stops of the same color like you can do in Sew It Pro? I don't know. I don't know. I can't. It's not click. That's not clicking for me. I don't know. Thank you, 755, honey bunny. Um, you're welcome, Kiddo Blue. Hey, Kiddo Blue. Big hugs, honey. Hey, welcome. You're welcome, Kevin. I sent that email, Kevin. So hopefully you'll get some help. Um, let me know if by Wednesday you don't hear anything. I'll try and get in touch with he remembers the names of folks more than I do. And I see her face, but I can't think of her name right now. I'll call her and see if she can find somebody to help you. Um, Sonic has broccoli nuggets. Oh my God. Didn't know that. Um, so <laughs> Sheila say you nodding your head. Like, I can see you, babe. I can see you right now in my mind. Cause I remember hanging with you. So I can see you nodding your head. So yes. Is there a place in Hatch? Okay, so I don't know, Karen Caldwell. I'm sorry um, that I don't know that, but I can definitely look into it and see um, if it comes up, if, if I can think of anything. But usually, if there's something like that that I want to combine, I bring it in the So What Pro and combine it, which sucks in a way, but that's pretty much what I would do. So, um, but yeah, you guys, that was Craftabilities. Hey, Terrell, how are you? You're up late, too. We got to get you blinging. I use the border tool all the time to create appliques. Yes. Yes, honey. Yes. I'm glad to know that. So, So What Pro is awesome. I absolutely love the program. It is perfect for doing embroidery. Uh, so, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Looks like I'm not. So, yeah, you guys, I'm getting ready to head out so I can go play with my eye massager. Like I said, I linked it in the chat. If you go through what I go through, you be tired and aggravated. Get you this thing. I thought it was just going to put some pressure on my eyes and help with my migraine, but it don't, y'all. This thing actually massages your eyes and your temples. It is a blessed thing from the heavens that I didn't even know existed. So, you can look up eye massager on um amazon or i'll link it because i'm telling y'all this is a game changer for me it has changed my whole eye fatigue life okay and we do a lot we get stressed out a lot so i firmly believe that if you don't do anything else you need to get an eye massager okay i'm gonna link it in the chat again so that you can find it and go get yourself one. I'm just telling you, it's blessed. It is definitely blessed. It has been amazing. And I sent y'all a video of Sir McQuacken's knocked out with my darn thing on. So I had to go get homie one because homie don't play that. I want my own so that when I'm ready to use it, I ain't got to wait your 15 minutes for my turn. You can have your all your turns over there to yourself. So here is an eye massager. I'm telling y'all, it will change your tired life. There's a period in there, so I'm going to place it again. All right, y'all. So you all have a great night. I cannot believe I've been on here four hours. I cannot. And then I'm going to be on here another two hours tomorrow night. But we're going to do some embroidery with some applique tomorrow. So if you do embroidery, you like applique, come on back so we can do some applique together. It's easy. I know you're going to love it. But I got to take the dog out. I know. I am going back to my homie. <laughs> homie D clown. Um, I got to take the puppy out. The puppy got to pee. So I will holler at y'all later. It was great. Thanks for hanging out with me on an impromptu night. Love y'all. Bye.